Hello and welcome to my stream. My name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations. Uh, thank you for joining me on this Saturday afternoon here in Oz. Um, it's maybe still Friday where you are or maybe it's Saturday already. I do apologize for streaming so late. I normally like to stream a lot earlier in the day but uh, uh, there's lots of things been happening and all that sort of stuff and uh, I had planned to do a recapping of a particular computer and then when I came to do it, um, I, uh, um, oh, Jay, thank you for putting the links on Discord, I do appreciate it. I've been a little bit slow with the uh, uh, promotion of this one today and maybe because it's a slightly later stream and all sorts of stuff, I, sort of, I normally promote these a little bit more. Micro Major Repair, thank you for joining and of course, thank you to, uh, to Jay for joining and Matt, welcome. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I, I do like to try and st stream a little bit earlier, but I got up this morning, had a bit of a s normal a weekend sleep in, and then I, uh, um, I was going to do a Macintosh 2FX recap, and I realized that I've never done one before, so I didn't have a recapping guide. So <laughs> I had to photograph the board. As people know, I always like to have, um, if you don't know, I always like to have nice high-res images of logic boards on my website. I haven't got it up on the website yet, but I have taken the photos and I have made the guide. So that is something that will be coming for the Macintosh 2FX. So I'm planning to actually recap that tomorrow and I'll hopefully live stream that as well. I've got a huge amount of kind of backlog stuff, which is really dull streaming stuff. So uh, I, I will, you know, I'm going to stream a bit of stuff today, but then I'm going to stop and I'm going to go do the boring stuff. And when I say boring stuff, I mean, it really is boring stuff. So We'll just see how we go. We'll just go for as long as we feel and then and then we'll move on. Um, so uh, to start off with today, uh, Fizzbin, hello and welcome. Uh, Zombie Geek 33 welcome. Scarlet Swordfish, welcome. Thank you. We've got uh, definitely got some regulars here. Thank you. And of course, if there is anyone here watching my stream for the first time, please jump on and say hello as well. Always like to hear from uh, new viewers. So as well as the regulars. So... Um, I've just come back this morning from a little trip down to my local ele electronics retailer and I thought I may as well live stream the sort of bits that I buy when I go there. I came back with um, wire fishnet stockings. I've seen these on power supplies and I just like the look of them so I want to be able to put these on some of my homemade cables and stuff as well. It's these ones where you put the wire inside and it, it's sort of it looks like these little kind of fishnet stockings, you know, sort of for the cables. Um, so you can put a ream of cables through there. They're on a lot of modern power supplies now. They're really in. And uh, I, uh, I just like the look of them. So I bought some of those so that I can make some of those myself. You put a little bit of heat shrink around the uh, edges at the top and bottom to hold them in place. And they look super fancy. Uh, I do like my stuff to look fancy. Finally, a streamer Bruce shows up his fishnets. Yeah, I don't know, look. These, what they call it is braided sleeving, but they look like wire cable fishnets to me. So that's just me. Right, that's going over in the pile of things where I may or may never, may or may not ever see them again. Um, I have a particular project I want to do today, and I uh, oh, I was also running very low on heat shrink, so I bought a box of different sized heat shrink. They're, they're just different sizes and colors. They're black. Uh, red and clear ones and they go from really thin ones up to big thick ones and uh it, look it's probably not the most um cost efficient way of buying these but i i've just found them to be really good to have them at that sort of length in that sort of little variety box this is my last one which i probably bought i don't know probably sometime around the first gulf war i don't know this is a long time ago i bought this and i've still got quite a bit in there but i'm running out of some of the more commonly used sizes that I use so uh, so um, yeah we go I know this is all fairly self-indulgent showing people my shopping but uh, I figured that given the fact that it says this is a stream about the uh, the stuff I you know do that what I come away from the electronics shop with might be of some interest to people so there's my heat shrink going up over in my heat shrink pile don't fall down uh, I did actually buy some wick at last I've, I've been mentioning in my last streams for a while that I've been running low on wick, so I've got some wick. Um, Oz Retrocon, thank you for joining. Retro Redrum, thank you for joining. Um, okay, so 
Bought my last box of heat shrink pieces from Aldi. Oh, I didn't even know that Aldi sold heat shrink. But then again, they sell everything, don't they? Uh, I'll get to these things later. Um, I will just, I bought some little plastic self-tapping screws. They're just for when I get things where the screws aren't in them, you know, like consumer electronics and stuff, just little screws. Uh, I just realized that I've got lots of little kind of little nuts and, and bolts, but I don't have any like self-tapping screws. So I wanted some of those. So they can go over here just to mess up the table. And then I bought a whole bunch of like thermal conductive stuff. That's it, I think. Yep, that's a lot. Thermal conductive stuff. And that's part of the project that I'm going to be working on today. And I'm going to explain the situation. Steve, welcome. I didn't know that I would get any more Mac Yakas here. Um, burning the midnight oil, as they say. Um... I watched, uh, I haven't watched all of it, but I watched some of your stream this, this morning, Steve. I, uh, uh, I, uh, um, I've, oh, that's right. You were doing the VGA capture thingy. That's right. I forgot. Um, and I, I, I do love your intro. I know it's not the first video you've had that intro, but I do love your little intro, your little countdown intro. Um, you know, that was something that I sort of uh, added on mine as well, because I just, I know it sometimes takes a little while to for people to, get the notification and then get online. So I think just think a little countdown at the beginning just helps people get, you know, arrive on time. Uh, Grudy, hello. Yes, uh, 11.42. Yes, I know I do apologize. I know it's late. I mean, I'm, I am sorry. Uh, just lots to do on Saturday mornings. And I, I'll tell you what, my, my wife has the patience of a saint at the moment. I have got so many computers in the living room of our house and more, more came in yesterday. Um, so yeah, and more came in today. So this is all getting a bit silly. I'm going to have to, <laughs> as I was saying just the other day, when I sit down and do a live stream, it takes me two hours to do something that normally takes me 15 minutes. So, but anyhow, I do like to try and share all the, uh, the fun stuff. So the other things that I came away from the shop today are, uh, are thermally conductive things. And I'm just going to see what I bought here because some of them, would, I just grabbed them based on the description. Okay, so this is, is it adhesive? This is, or is it? They've called this, what do they call it? Thermal tape thermal transfer. So I'm expecting this will be adhesive or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that looks adhesive. Yeah, okay. So what I basically have here are two 100 by 100 mil squares of thermal pads. So these are when you need to... Um, you know, sort of if you've got a heat sink or something like that and you want to sort of transfer, you know, you want to get a nice seal between things. So these aren't the finest quality, but they'll do for the sort of thing that I'm doing. And I'll explain what I am doing in a minute. Now, I have a Macintosh Color Classic and it has, I'm saying it's not midnight, so I'm not burning the oil yet. Okay, fair enough. This is true. This is true. I hadn't even really thought of that. Burning the midnight oil, it's got to be midnight to be burning that, doesn't it? Yep. No, I, I, I misspoke. Oopsie. Just get this out of the way. I do have some space issues in here and they are getting uh, progressively worse um, as I get more stuff in here. Um, so anyhow, I've got a Macintosh Color Classic and it has a problem with uh, the uh, horizontal deflection transistor. Now, this is it here. I'm just going to jump across into a little side view so I can show it to you. This little Motorola thing here. MJF16206. Uh, now that's the, they, they, they use very, very high voltage, I think 700 volts or more or something like that. And these are designed for CRT screens. Now, of course, things like this aren't as readily available as they used to be because, well, no one's making CRTs anymore. So trying to get hold of replacement components like this when they fail becomes quite difficult. Now, I did manage to find uh, it's one of the bastards that killed my black and white CRT. Yeah, these, these, they, it's a common failing point. As I've said to people many times before, when you've got a CRT with a problem, generally the first thing you look for are cracked soldered joints or you know switches that have you know gone bad because often old CRTs have little push button switches and after being pushed off and on and off and on squazillions of times they go bad or they get cracked solder joints. You get cracked solder joints on the large components. Uh, so cracked solder joints are always the thing to f look for first. Then, of course, you've got uh, uh, capacitor failure. There's always an issue, you always potential for capacitor failure on those things. And then you've got um, 
Uh, flyback transformers, they often fail on CRTs, and of course they're getting harder to get now as well. And deflection transistors, these guys are also a, a, a fairly common failing, and that's because they usually get quite hot. So generally things that get hot usually have a limited lifespan, or their lifespan is less than others. So um, <laughs> the lack of grounding didn't help. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I might be remembering that whole saga differently to other people, but as I remember, didn't you replace a component and then it died when you put it back together? I'm, I'm not making any judgment. All I'm asking for is clarification of the uh, series of events. So that's that's all I'm saying. Um, I'll say no more on the matter. Uh, Dale McLaughlin, thank you for joining. Um, have I missed anyone? Just let me just check the chat here and make sure. I think everyone I'm, I've mentioned everyone who has turned up. Uh, I currently have 16 concurrent viewers, so thank you to the 16 of you, wherever you might be. Um, please jump on and say good day. Um, uh, fake news, it was dying, then I fixed it, and it ended up dead. Correlation does not mean causation. Okay, all right. So all of that swearing and cracking and all those sorts of weird noises that were coming from it are unrelated. <laughs> right, so let me, just, um, let me just continue my little story here, and then we can move on. Um, all right, so uh, I have hunted down some replacements for this component. This is... Uh, Slightly different numbering on here. It is MJW rather than MJF 16206. But I have looked at the spec sheet on this one, and it is essentially the same, if anything, just a higher voltage rating. So I, I shouldn't really have any issue with this. Sorry about the lack of focus. If I put that there, there we go, focus. Yeah, that looks nice. Um, so that's it there. It's a bit hard to see the writing, but you know. Tell the photo. Wow, look at that. Now you can see it, MJW 16206. And we can see it is a Motorola. Now, of course, it could just be a uh, cheap rip knockoff with the Motorola logo on it, but I'm assuming that it is a Motorola. I bought it because it was branded as Motorola. So there we go. Now, there is a problem with this component as a replacement. And you'll see that when I put them next to each other and flip them over. One of them, the original, is completely and totally encapsulated and insulated. This one here has this open part here for, you know, potentially sort of soldering down onto a board or something like that. And I uh, cannot have that exposed. That needs to be insulated. But the problem I have is that this also needs to be uh, up against a, uh, a heat sink because this generates a lot of heat and that heat needs to dissipate. So I need to basically put something insulating here that is also going to, to um, uh, distribute heat, you know, or transfer heat across onto the heat sink. So um, what I did was I found these little guys. These are essentially thermal pads, little adhesive thermal pads. Um, with the, They've got a little hole in them already, and I'm hoping that I can put these on, even if I do it, maybe a, a couple of them. It's insulated down the center here, so when I put the screw in, it's not going to be an issue. But um, I, 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 my plan is that I'll put this on and I'll put that up against the heat shrink, heat sink and that will insulate it. That is the plan. Now, of course, um, you know, um, uh, I'm live without a net here, so I, I, anything could happen. And when it comes to high voltage in uh, deflection transistors, it could get really exciting. So let's just see what happens. But anyhow, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and grab my Color Classic. We're going to pull it apart. And we'll um, we'll see what we can do. Thermal paste. The main problem with thermal. Yeah. I, okay. So uh, scarlet sawfish thermal paste. There. So these are thermal pads. Yeah. Did I say paste? I meant pads. Obviously, I can't use thermal paste on this because um, when I tighten up the screw to hold it up against the um, uh, heat sink, it's going to potentially squeeze that paste out, and then I'm you know I've still got the risk of getting that metal touching onto the uh, onto the. Uh, heat shield and I don't want that. It'll make a lot more sense when I actually get the thing out here and pull it apart. So excuse me while I just get up here and grab this heavy thing and make you know, old man noises. Okay, here she comes. Here she comes. This one is my one by the way. This does not belong to someone else. Oh, ah, ooh, there we go. Ooh. 
Sorry about all the wobbling and cameras when I move this around. Obviously, it sort of shakes the table up and stuff like that. So we're just going to undo a few few screws here. It doesn't, doesn't take long to undo these. Only four screws. Nice and easy to access. <sighs> um, it's worth mentioning that, yeah, these, um, when you are, when you look at Apple's little technical guide for a color classic, it indicates this uh, uh, little, um, what do you call it? This little uh, deflection transistor is, or the heat shrink on it, heat shield on it as a do not touch part of the board. Do not touch, you hurt your serum. I know I should be lying this down on its face, but I can't be bothered. The whole idea is that this will be quicker and easier, but it probably didn't turn out to be. All right, let's just get these screws out of the way. I am so confined for space here at the moment. It is driving me bananas. I will try and get this cleaned up tomorrow or later today. Yeah, no touchy. <laughs> yep. I won't sing that song that, uh, you know, that don't touch this song because I might get a copyright strike. Um, because I, I can sing it so close to the original that it might get caught out by one of those YouTube algorithms. Um, right, so let's just shimmy them around here. Now, I can't get the zoom exactly on the center of this. I have the ability to zoom this camera, but I don't have the ability to move it left and right. I've got to do that manually. So I have to kind of put things on the table where they're going to be centered for the camera, and that's a little bit hard sometimes. So this is the little guy here. Dun, 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 dun. Um, now, I haven't had this on for quite some time, but as usual, being super safe, let's go in and um, do that thing. Um, remember, folks, very, very dangerous in these things. Uh, do not do what I'm doing unless you know what you're doing. Uh, big disclaimer, lots of death and pain can come to you if you don't do it right. I do have a video on my channel for how to discharge a CRT on a Compact Mac. Uh, if you are planning to do something like this, I recommend you watch it. And uh, if you are looking at this and thinking this is something that I would never do, that's fine. I quite understand. I do not, I do not shame people for that. Um, you know, voltage is dangerous. Okay. So sliding out a, an analog board here, they come out nice and easily. It's a very easy process if it's done correctly. And the only reason why I say that is because I did get one sent me, someone sent me a color classic once to work on. And it was clear that someone had tried to remove the analog board via, oh, I don't know what they did to be honest but they had just bent metal left, right, and center, and I had an absolute nightmare getting it out. It's a job that should take a couple of seconds, and it took me probably about an hour to get it out, and it was really frustrating because it was only because someone had stuffed it up. Right, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn on the um machine. I need the um machine for this, so I'm gonna switch him on. He makes a horrible noise when I first switch him on. He goes, <laughs> Uh, it's a crappy fan, I think, so. Uh, <coughs> crazy tech reviews. Did I say welcome? I'm not sure if I did. Welcome. Um, um, um. So just uh, for anyone who hasn't seen the UM machine before, this is a motorized solder sucker. It is a cheapie, but so far it's been quite good for me, apart from the fact that on the day that I bought it, I dropped this little glass capsule and it shattered, and it is now held together with JB Weld. Having said that, it has held together very well and it works beautifully. Uh, I have a couple of complaints about it. Number one, the fan is pretty lousy in it and it will need to be replaced because it makes that horrible noise. Uh, this little thing that's screwed on the front has spot for three screws, but it's only held on with two. Ah, I bought screws today, didn't I? Shall we? Shall we? Uh, where did I put them? Over here. Now, did I get the right size? Yeah, I think this size will do. Maybe a bit too long. We'll just see. Oh, this is exciting. Didn't think I would get a use for these quite so quickly. Uh, so yes, they only have um, three screws screwing, screwed in. Uh, what else don't I like about it? I find the little capsule thing a little bit difficult to get out. I find it all a little bit cumbersome when it comes time for cleaning them. But that could well be the same for all 
of these sorts of machines. So I can't necessarily, I've ne I haven't tried other ones, so I can't really go in and say, oh, look, you know, that's a really bad thing because it might just be a standard thing for all of them. I can't find a screwdriver I want. Here it is. Um, okay, so Jesse Stevens, hello and welcome. Um, okay, what have we got here? Uh, here. Um, so now, okay, I don't know. You'll see Bernadette. I'm streaming at a different time here. She may not come. Okay, screwing this in. I think I think the screw is too long. Yes, it is. It's too long. So it's going to hang out a little bit, but still, I'll have to cut it shorter or something. Oh, Grudy, thank you very much for that live stream. I, uh, that, um, what do you call it thing? Super chat. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Dogs are begging me to go to bed. So good night, everybody. Good night, Bruce. Thank you, Grudy. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, say hello to the dogs for me. Um, so, um machine. Right, let's get my analog board and um, um some things off it. Um, so yeah, this is basically, it's like a soldering iron on the end with a hole through the middle and it sucks solder out. And it's very, very handy. It, 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 I use it, I've been using a, a manual solder sucker, one that you press the button and go, you know. Um, I've been using one of those for years. And... I have always said, oh, look, you know, if I get one of these, I'll just use it for the difficult jobs. But I find myself switching it on for even the easy ones now, too. So it's made me lazy. But still, at least I'm getting my money's worth out of it. Okay. Up comes the shield. Let's plonk that anywhere where I can find a bit of space. Um, the Brucinator. Yeah, that's this guy. The Brucinator. Um, resolving the popped Mac from last weekend. I did. That was the Macintosh SE. Now I, uh, this is, this was actually, and in my, did I, oh, I mentioned it on my Facebook page. That's why. So generally I, I do I, up, updates on my Facebook page. So if you're ever watching a stream like that and you're wanting to, um, see whether it worked out, if I, if I've gone in and I've fixed it, um, I usually jump onto my Brankus Creations Facebook page. If you go on Facebook and search for Brankus Creations, you know, obviously the same name as the uh, the channel. Um, you will there's actually a link to it on my uh, YouTube um, uh, page. <coughs> um, and go in and follow that, and I'll do um, um, little updates. But the because uh, I did record a little video of that as well and post it on that. So basically, what happened? It was a 600 volt three amp diode, one of these little guys. Now I'm. Uh, as I mentioned before, I, I live very close to a little electronics retailer and I was just very lucky that they carry these in stock. So I was able to just literally, as soon as I finished that SE, pardon me, uh, I think it was, was it late? Whatever, it's, whenever it was. Anyhow, yeah, I think it was, I, I did have, still have time. I jumped into the car. I popped out to uh, my local electronics retailer. I bought a packet of 10 of these, replaced it and bang, away she worked perfectly and better than she worked before. When the guy came to pick it up, the customer came to pick it up, because when he dropped it off, he said, oh, I've got some issues with the screen distorted, you know, uh, it's a little bit wonky at the top and it's tilted and stuff like that. So no worries, I'll, I'll do what I can about that. When well, anyway, I fired it up, the screen uh, geometry was beautiful. So when he came in and saw it when it was fired up, he said, oh, it's never looked that good. So it's very clear that there were ongoing problems with that. Those problems had been around for a while, probably those cracked solder joints that I fixed. And then obviously you replaced that diode. And the SE now is working beautifully. So yes, that all got good sorted. Um, yeah, just checking all this. Um, like an electronic shop knows you on a first name basis by now. Well, yes and no. There was one guy there, and I don't know, he was very old. He might have left. There was one guy there I used to chat to all the time. He was a um, also, I, I play around with the Raspberry Pi a little bit. I really like the Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> For those who don't know, there's a little tiny computers. And um, uh, there was an old guy there that I used to go into and, and chat, um, you know, about Raspberry Pi, but I haven't seen him in there for ages. I don't know if he's unwell or whatever, because he was very old. Um, but yeah, most of the people in there, they, they certainly know my face, but they don't know my name. I mean, but yeah, I'm in there a fair bit. Uh, and they have a rewards program, which is great, because I get lots of rewards. Um, right, so we need to get this off It'll come off uh, it is soldered in five different places here so I am going to deal with that right here right now 
I'd say that. Uh, where's my um machine? Here we are. Idiot. Underneath. There we go. Here we are. I just dropped something. There we go. All right. So, uh, uh, so we get this on here and we go. Uh, 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 now these ones here, these bigger ones are a little a little bit harder because they are. I can't stick this around the outside of it. Around the outside of the pin, the pin's way too fat. I'm not trying to give the pin a complex issue, but it is way way too fat for me to use with my um machine. Right, will this come out now? I need to turn on the regular machine now. Sounds like a cow. Yes, yes, that, that has also been mentioned, actually. Um, it sounds like making life easier. That's what it sounds like. I better zoom this out a bit. I'm making this a bit hard to see. Wide. Okay. <laughs> right, so these pins here I think are all fine. Let's just check. Yeah, they seem to be good. So it's just these big fat ones. There we go. They're coming out. Oh, out she comes. Oh, chickums. This bloody grounding strap gets caught on everything. All right, let's move that out of the way. Put it somewhere. I don't have anywhere to put it. Now, I have been doing some little fiddling around with this already, but... I wanted to find a more potentially permanent solution. Do you know of a source for flyback for an Apple RG monitor for an Apple II GS? Nope. <laughs> I would love to be able to say yes. Uh, if someone knows of flyback sources, please jump onto the chat and share them because, yeah, I mean, look, thankfully they don't go that often, but when they do, it's, it's you can't do anything without them. I mean, I did vaguely remember hearing someone say there were um, uh, people that were reconditioning them or something like that, but uh, yeah, that's a hefty heat sink, heat sink. I can't speak today. Uh, how hard, hard it's being driven. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a whopper, isn't it? Um, so uh, yeah, joy, joy, oh joy. There it is. Ta -da. And so this basically sits on here like that and gets screwed in. But the problem is that I need to make sure that this metal is insulated from this, but while still transferring heat. So I've got this little thermal pad. That I'm... Ah! Sorry, things just falling down. Thankfully, it wasn't bad. But yesterday, I dropped a pile of resistors over the back of the desk here. I haven't cleaned them up yet, but I'll, I'll need to go and do that. I will need to sort that out. Because one day I'll, I'll be sitting here going, where are all my resistors? Oh, that's right. Um... Uh, where are my goggles? Here we are. What's wrong with the original part? It's stuffed. Um, this is the original one here. With this one in, the screen goes... <laughs> similar sounds. Uh, it just crackles and crackles and crackles. It's really bad. So, no good. It's bed. Look at that. Now, I'm going to try, should I, should I, I've, I don't know, this is going to be like sticking on an iPhone screen protector. There we go. I'm just wondering if I can, is there enough room for me to keep it like that? I've got it all crooked. Um, so, I've done it like that, and I've done it crooked. Okay, that won't fit in there, so I'm going to have to cut that a bit. Stay. This is an adventure, I'll tell you. One. And I'm now cutting the excess so that my component will fit in there. I cut it fairly aggressively, but I do believe that will fit in there. So then I need to peel the uh, rest of it off. Can't read this with my goggles on. Uh, oh wow, look at all the, oh, this, this, oh, things, things, okay, um, 
Mine has gone blurry and I can't adjust it out. That can often be a resistor. Uh, it depends on the machine, of course. It depends on how the focus is adjusted. Uh, if it is one that, where the focus is on the flyback transformer, then yes, you're going to have issues with that. Uh, for instance, I had a Macintosh SC30, I think it was, where the focus wasn't working. And uh, there was basically the little trim pot for doing the focus on the analog board, and then there was a resistor next to that, and that resistor had cooked. And I just basically replaced that resistor, and the, it started focusing again. So it was all good. Um, the Color Classic to pit in something non-CRT. I'm still going to see. Yeah, I don't know, uh, Jesse, if you can do that, if you can actually, um, you know, use it like an LCD or something like that. I'm sure someone with more um, electronics uh, experience than I might be able to give you an answer to that. I don't know. It's not something I've ever tried to do. So it's a cool idea, but I've never tried to do it. Um, eh, come on. I'm trying to get this off, this little backing off without destroying it. Now I've got one there, but you know what? I am so extremely unhappy with the way I've done this. I'm not going to use it because it's, it's just, it's um, refuse. It's terrible. Um, I'm going to grab some more of these little thermal pads. Where are these thermal pads? I just had them. I just had them. Did anyone see the capacitor fairies come in and take them? Um, how do I know it's caused by that part failing? I know because I put a good one in from another color classic and it worked perfectly afterwards. Um, I swapped the component over from two, I had two color classics, I swapped the component over. But that is a, not a long-term solution for a repair because either way I'm going to end up with one that doesn't work. So that's how I know. Um, Okay. Can I cost parts on the wrong term? Recapping right now. Good on you, Fizzbin. Bit of recapping going on. Okay. So. Yeah, they are. They weren't too far away. So I'm going to do this again, uh, and I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. Now that I know. Yeah. I've got to take a little bit off of each side. I'm going to do that while it's still attached to... I'd love a pair of scissors. And I do have a pair in here somewhere. But it's just a question of whether it's, it's something that I can find without having to... Oh, I can see them! Scissors! Oh, and a needle. Just a sewing needle, nothing, not drug paraphernalia or anything like that. So how much did I take off? About that much. Okay, so I'd rather take off a tiny little bit more than less. Um, and I am going to do it to two of them. I hope this works. If it doesn't, it's going to be a bit embarrassing. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. Um, right. All these tools and no scissors. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, all right, so I'm just getting these little thermal pads. And I'm using two. I just want to, with it being such high voltage, I want to make sure I have enough, enough clearance here. Um, but by using thermal pads, I, they are going to help conduct the heat from the component to the heat um, heat sink. I keep wanting to say heat shrink. Um, I think that's because I bought some today. So, I'm, you know, I've just got one of those brains. Can't deal with too many different things at once. Mm -mm. Come on. It's, it's quite annoying. When you peel the backing off these, they distort. So uh, I'm having a lot of trouble kind of keeping them in shape and all that sort of stuff. But Okay. By the way, anyone who didn't watch my Macintosh SE stream recently that I did, uh, there's the 
the thermal pads in there. Put the uh, oi, oi, oi. stay, stay. There we go. Uh, anyone who didn't watch the SE stream, uh, for the convenience of others, I've put a little link in the description that takes you straight to the point that the uh, component pops and I let out, let out a little squeal. Okay. Um, so, you know, just for those who want to just see that, I, I've tried to make that as easy as possible. All right. Now, I don't want to do it up too much. Let's just have a look and see if I've got, uh, I've got it all cleared. I don't want, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. I hope I've got enough clearance here. I mean, I think I do, but we'll see. We'll soon see, won't we? <clears throat> It'll certainly let me know if I don't. It'll go... <laughs> and that's not what we want. Just in case anyone was wondering. <clears throat> uh, how many Macs do you have? That's a very good question. I have never actually bothered to count them all. Um, I have a pile of nine compact Macs, thereabouts, and then maybe another probably 10 or so other like desktop Macs, and then maybe 20 laptops, something like that. Um, but yeah, I haven't actually really bothered to go in and do a proper you know, audit and um, and count and record it and stuff. I mean, it just continues to grow too. I am um, buying a quarter nine fifty. Well, hopefully I am anyway. The offer's been made. We'll just see. It's one of my customers has one for sale, and I dibsed it. I dibsed it real quick. I said, "Ooh, I want it." And he's now got to come up with a price. He'll give me the price. We'll both have a bit of a laugh. We'll have it. And then we'll be good to go. No, I'm just joking. I mean, I'm seriously, I know the 950s are worth a lot of money. He went to a lot of trouble to get it too. So I'm not going to, I'm certainly not going to stiff him on it. That's for sure. Ah. Mm. All right. Back to our uh, uh, Color Classic analog board here. It is already recapped this one. So... Uh, there are no issues with the capacitors on this one. It is just, uh, so it is essentially a pretty much a fine, fine working board. Um, apart from this. And you have the show hoarders down there. Yes, yes, the show hoarders does appear on one of the networks down here. I don't know which one. Um, I'm not sure that I would, I would go to, I, I think there's a difference between hoarders and collectors. I know it's a very, very fine difference, but it is a difference. Um... Hoarders hang on to just about anything, you know what I mean? They just hang on to everything because they cannot see, you know, for them it is just sort of like, oh, I might need that, you know. Um, whereas I'm not like that. I do, do tend to throw things away, but I just like to keep my, um, uh, I like the vintage Macs. And having said that, I, I collected them for a while and then I gave a lot of them away and um, stupidly. And and then I kind of got into it again when I started doing all this recapping. And so I've had to go in and kind of get some back. I mean, I, at one stage I had three 540, PowerBook 540Cs all in working condition. And I gave them all away. Right. So time to uh, solder this little thing in. Or solder, depending on where in the world you're from. Uh, as I've said before, as long as we all know what we're talking about, that's all that matters. Okay, so, come on, come on. Oh, stop pulling out. Stop it. Now, I've just got to get some solder on one of these and then it can hold it in. Oh, shit. That pad's come off. I mean, oh, goodness. <laughs> Oh, dag nabbit.
You notice the way that smoke's going right up into my face? That tells me I don't have my fan on. Ugh. Okay, I'd love to be able to look at this under the microscope, but it's it's just too cumbersome. So I'm just doing it with the uh, the nude eye. Let's get some solder on here. I can actually feel I'm having trouble getting heat where I need it for this. Um, it's working, but uh, that heat shrink, heat shield, um, needless to say, it's what it's designed to do, is uh, sucking a lot of the heat away from my soldering iron. Okay, that's good. Now let's just make sure that this one is holding on as well. This is this pad started coming off, so once it's got solder on it, it'll still work. I'll just make sure that's reasonably secure. And let's clean. Bruce said I swear he did too. Yeah, I don't know. I've been pretty good actually in the past. I don't think I've ever sworn on a stream before, but that one just came out. It's like, oopsie. I'm just going to check this resistor here as well. Resistor mode. Because apparently these ones can fail around here. Stop giving me that. Stop it. Stop. It's a bit hard to tell. This is clearly when testing it in um, in situ. It's not. Uh, it's not working. I would need to take a component off to test it properly, and I'm not going to do that. No. Um, just in case anyone is sort of feeling like these classic boards are designed very badly, you're right. Uh, you see all this discoloration here. It's because of heat. These things generate a huge amount of heat, um, which is a real shame. Um, they'll probably all die in the end. Um, and then I'll, people will be sending them to me to fix. Ooh, I was talking about that 950. I just got a message from the guy. Well, I think he sent me a photo of it working. Okay, sent a photo. Ooh, this 950 works. Name your price exclamation mark okay excuse me there's probably a little bit of crackle there i'm playing around with my microphone thingy here all right so um aluminum uh oh thank you jay jay is he's very good with the uh um with the the, the uh promotion of uh, my website and whatnot uh i do appreciate it very much uh where do i put that shield up here Aluminum, yeah, so we say aluminium. You stick another syllable in there. Because, um, you know, why not? Okay, all right. So now I've got my thing, got my thing, and in theory, it's a very high likelihood that it might possibly work, maybe. Um, so let's just get this out of the way somewhere, for goodness sake, anywhere. That'll do. Let's bring the computer back. Uh, ooh, ah, ooh. One million dollars for a uh, Quadra 950. I am in negotiations to buy a Quadra 950. They're a little bit rare, so I don't expect it to be super cheap. But, you know, at the same time, it is a customer of mine, customer of mine. So I do not expect him to be trying to rip me off or anything like that. But at the same time, I, I, I you know, I don't want to rip him off, you know. I mean, I would love it if it didn't work. Because then I could probably get it for cheaper and fix it. 
But at the same time, it's also nice when you buy these things and they do work. The 950s, if I remember correctly, the 950s don't have any surface mount um, uh, electrolytic capacitors on them. I think they're all tantalum, so they don't have the same sorts of problems as a lot of the vintage Macs do with the leaky caps. I got another Colour Classic board today uh, to recap. Anyone who watches my streams know that I recap a lot of Colour Classics. And I got another one today, uh, and once again, it has that real sort of dark smeary sort of yucky look about it um that you, you just take one just cursory glance and you know that things leaked terribly um so uh yeah okay we've got uh it also needs a power cable that goes between the power supply and the hard drive I feel it doesn't seem to have that either okay yeah, I mean, this is the thing, that's what you'd be paying in the US. Um, sorry for that, I'm messaging this. I just, um, I'm just going to let him know I'm live streaming. Doing a live stream. Uh, so, apologies if replies are slow. So now he might jump on and watch, and then I can just talk to him in the chat, can't I? <laughs> all right. So connecting up all these cables again. Uh, there's a whole bunch here. There's like a degauss cable. There's a yoke cable. There's the uh, CRT controller, there's the uh, microphone, uh, there's the speaker, and stuff. So, let's get this connected. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Always do a double check, make sure everything is connected, because sometimes if you're uh, putting these things to back together and you, for example, I don't know, forget to connect up the ground wire, you can break things. Not not aimed at anyone specific. Um, okay. Right, we're getting ready. Um, I'm starting this up with the cover off. Once again, disclaimer, don't do that. It's stupid. It's stupid and dangerous. You can die. Okay, you ready? That doesn't switch it on. That just powers it up. It's standby. That's all. I tricked you. I got to do. Oh crap! Except it turned on by itself. <laughs> I didn't even press the power button. I'm just being super wary here. Uh, by the way, this one here, and it's, this is because I haven't recapped the logic board of this one yet. Yeah, this is an LC five seven five board in this, by the way. It's making noises. It's making crackly noises. Horrible crackly noises. Oh, it's just restarted again. That mine does that. My logic board restarts twice. Well, this is, yeah. I'm going to grab a toothbrush here and go. Okay, so we're clearly still not right. Freaks me out when I see it because I've got a, I've put a hard drive light in here. Um, so this glows red when the hard drive, there's hard drive activity and I can see that coming through here and it makes it look like this thing's like, you know, heating up or something like that, but it's not. So it is a little bit wobbly. Um, there's no doubt about that. And it is making a, a horrendous noise, which you may or may not be able to hear coming from the speaker. So there is definitely some interference going on there. Uh, so look, I think it's promising i definitely think i'm on the right track but maybe i need to provide a little bit more insulation there poke it just poke it i might poke it i'll poke i'll poke the flicker away anyhow look i it's i mean it looks okay now doesn't it it's not flickering or anything it's just making that nasty noise so 
I'll have to uh, I'll have to see. Yeah. So anyhow, this is even though it it um, it looks suspiciously like a color classic, it is actually a uh, about this computer. Uh, it is actually uh, an LC. Um, what do you call those things? Uh, five seven five board with thirty two megs of RAM. Uh, it's four on board. That's why it's showing this thirty six. So I can sit down and play games on this, and it is also a six forty by four eighty display because it's been mysticed. Um, so um, what I'm thinking with this is that um, I'm definitely onto a winner um, in that it does work, but I think I might need to provide a little bit more insulation around that to try and stop all this crackly crackles. So anyhow. So that'll do for now. I'm not going to uh, work on this one anymore because uh, the uh, continuing work on that one will just be boring and that's not what I, what I want to do for... It does not want to stay off either. So there's, a, there's something that needs to be... Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> something resting on the power button. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Goodness gracious. All right, let's just check the chat here. I'll get this on. Come on, let's put this on here without damaging me or the Mac. There we go. Ta-da. Okay, so let's just have a quick look. Yeah, can't. You, I could definitely hear the noise. I'm not surprised it wasn't being picked up on the uh, mic because it was actually coming from the speaker out the other side. So noise wasn't coming from the component or anything. But there's definitely some interference going on there causing that crackling sound. So I need to just get that sorted out here. The pin cushion on the right side display. Yeah, yep. Okay, so. That's this one. Um, let's now move to the second one. I've got another color classic over here that needs a little bit of work done to it. And I'm going to do that now. So excuse me while I swap color classics. Now you'll be, you have seen this one in a stream before. Um, um, and this is the one that's the super, super yellow one. Uh, I did, this was one where I, I turned it into a mystic which isn't that nice. And so this is a very, very yellow color classic. Uh, uh, yeah, I can deal with the slow refresh rate. It's not, I don't think it's that slow. It's not 47, is it? I, I will know if I play around with that camera because the camera that I've got here, this side view camera, I can actually synchronize this with, uh, with the screen. I'll do that now and I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll be able to tell you exactly what the refresh rate is. Um, Okay, oh, let me take the back off. It'd be a lot easier if I take the back off. Uh -uh. Come on. Oh, that's right. This is the one that had terrible uh, leakage inside. Uh, and so there's a little bit of rust in the bottom of this case. Not too nice. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to just... I really shouldn't fire it up because I'm about to pull it apart. I don't have to discharge it. If I fire it up, I have to discharge it. Ah, come on. For everyone. Think of the, think of the common good. I'll fire it up and then I'll discharge it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this up. I'm going to fire it up. And then I'm going to play a little. with. The, first of all, I'll show you what the problem is with this. But I'm going to play with the camera so that you can see the... Um, the synchronization that I can do here and then I'll be able to tell you exactly what the frame rate is. So I'm going to just do this. The camera will wobble a little while I'm doing this uh, and it will also, what? Set WB mode. What? 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 I don't know what that means. Okay, it's going to get dark or light and weird things are going to happen. Okay, so Let's uh, synchronize this, shall we? Well, there we go. We were nearly there. Too far. I, what I basically what I'm aiming for is no little lines on it. There we go. So I'm synchronized there at 59.9 frames a second. So that's, that's the refresh rate. 
Right, now, I am going to ask a question here, and it's a difficult one, but can anyone tell me what the problem with this computer is? Oh, well, the answer's already there. How about that? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, don't forget to like the video. Thank you, Steve. What is that? Getting a reflection from something. Yeah, so anyhow, uh, yeah, we can basically see that there are some problems here. And now I can get this to pretty much go right by just giving it a bit of a whack and a tap and stuff like that. It'll generally go good. Um, Steve, you've got one that does that, don't you? Uh, and so I am going to, I want to inspect the analog board on the microscope and look out for any damaged or cracked traces that might be causing this. Because generally when you're having these problems that are associated with, you know, intermittent wobbles and that sort of stuff, it can often be cracked solder joints, uh, especially with this one that I know has had a fair bit of corrosion on it. And it also generates a lot of heat. And sometimes the heat can cause the cracked solder joints. The other thing is the little pots on the back, the little potentiometers that you use to adjust brightness and all that sort of stuff and geometry and all those sorts of things, they uh, do uh, go, um, They I think they're a bit corroded inside, so I'll probably clean those out a little bit as well. So let's shut this down, shall we? Um, hello, there's my, okay. it's very hard to see it in OBS because it happens a little bit delayed. Okay, good night to you. And you undo that and undo that. Right. Um, uh, the green and blue electron guns apparently aren't firing. Yeah, well, they are only because I've seen it change from red to the other just like by bumping it. So, I mean, yes, no, you're right. I mean, maybe they're not, but but I, I basically believe it's something to do with because you, some of these little pots at the back, they they have very significant adjustments for um, for the colours on the screen, and I think one of those isn't working properly. So um, I'm just going to change back to the normal shutter speed because it's a little bit dark when we do that one. Um, it's going that's super dark. There we go, twenty five frames a second. Thank you. <coughs> Or 125th, I should say. 125th of a second. It's a nice compromise for the shutter speed indoors. That allows me to get a reasonably bright picture. Right, discharge time once again. Oops, I dropped my UV solar mask. I'll have to fetch it later. In we go. Crackle, crackle, crackle. This is a Color Classic. Color Classic does have a bleeder resistor. So we uh, generally don't need to worry about um, discharging, but we do it anyway to be super safe because I do not want to electrocute myself in a live stream. It's just, I might get some more viewers, but uh, I'm just not sure it would be worth it. All right, so this we're going to undo this. This is all getting fairly familiar now because this is the second one I've done in this stream. Um, that's that. This is the main difference with this one in terms of what I have to do. Um, do, do. I um, I did some of this uh, elastic to hold this back on. Generally, when I've, I'm working on these and I give them back to people, I like to return them the way they gave them to me, and they gave this one to me with this elastic on this, and so I um, put some elastic on there, and. Uh, of course, now I'm having to pull it apart again. It's because I'm stupid. I put it on a little bit prematurely. Eh. Eh. Okay, let's see if we can wobble that off now. There we go, that's off. Get some of this elastic off. Cut, cut, cut. I will replace it with some afterwards, but I will wait until I'm 100% happy with the way it's working before I put that on. And I won't feel quite so silly. Still feel silly, but just not as silly. All right, I think that's it. Off she comes. Oops, I forgot the grounding strap, didn't I? 
See, even I can forget grounding straps. Well, I have no right to chastise anyone else. Okay, that goes away. Uh, oh, my goodness. My goodness. Okay. Um, da -da -da. All right, yes. Okay, yes. I mean, yeah, I, I definitely think a, a, a live on stream electrocution would, uh, would get a few uh, subs, uh, but I'm not sure if it would be worth it. Uh, incidentally, thank you to people who have been subscribing to my channel. I'm currently sitting on about 1650 or something like that, um, which is, you know, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. That's, uh, uh, I never really expected to get that high. I am planning a giveaway. I will be doing an announcement about that fairly soon. Um, I'm basically going to be giving away a Macintosh 2VI. Uh, fully recapped. Um, you know, CD-ROM drive version. So that was the one that you had to pay extra for. Um, haven't decided whether it's going to have a SCSI to SD in it or whether it's going to have a spinner hard drive. It'll just depend on how generous I'm feeling. Um, but uh, yeah, Macintosh 2VI. Now, because it's a fairly bulky item, I will really only be offering it to, um, you, you know, to giving it away with shipping to uh, people on the Australian mainland or Tasmania. However, if people do want to enter the giveaway from other countries, that's fine, but they then have to look after the shipping side of things. So just sort of letting you know, that is something that is coming. And as I say, it's a fully functional, fully complete Macintosh 2VI um, with working floppy, working CD-ROM drive, working hard drive, fully recapped, ready for, ready for business. Um, it... Uh, for those who are not familiar with the 2VI, it is a bit of a rarity outside of Australia and I think Japan because it was not sold in the US. Uh, it was only sold out here. It was the baby brother to the Macintosh 2VX, slightly so a CPU and it didn't have an FPU built in. But uh, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, this is true. I, yeah, unless someone comes down here to stop the stream if I die. Um, the one you did a video on. No, it's not. It's a new one. So the one I did a video on with the Macintosh 2VI, that was one that I got hold of that had uh, a bit of battery cancer that I repaired. Now, I'm keeping that one. I'm keeping that one for two reasons. First of all, because there's love in it. I poured love into that one when I did it because I fixed up all that stuff and spent all that time repairing it. So that's the one I want to keep because it's the one that I repaired. The other reason why I'm keeping that one is because I managed to get hold of a tray loading CD ROM drive and the little faceplate for it. For big thank you uh, to uh, who was it? I think it was I think it was David Peake gave me that one. So uh, uh, yeah, that was a huge, a huge, a really nice uh, gesture from him, and I really appreciated that. Uh, and so I, I'm hanging on to that one. Now this one is a uh, caddy loading, the one that I'm giving away is a caddy loading CD-ROM drive. Uh, that will be recapped. I will be, uh, I will be giving it away recapped. I won't be giving it away with a caddy only because I have one and I don't have any extras to give away. Actually, I think I might have two, but I've got at least three computers with um, caddy drives. So I don't, I, I need to hang on to a couple. So I won't be giving away a caddy, but you can buy them. You can get hold of them. So, uh, uh, yes, it's a 1.4 megabyte floppy drive. So it's the 2VX is it was the last of the Macintosh 2VX and 2VI were the last of the Macintosh 2 series. So if you think of Macintosh 2, 2X, 2FX, 2CI, 2CX, 2SI, uh, I think, and then 2C, 2VI, and 2VX. Now, of course, from then on, they then started moving into things like quadras and stuff like that. So in terms of where it falls in the, in the history of computers, it's well after super drives, well after the, the high density floppy drives. So uh, yes, it does have a 1.4 megabyte um, super drive in it. And I think it has four memory slots. I can't be sure. Hey, hey look, I've got a little tool here as part of my uh, job service system um, that I, where I can tell you all the specs about a 2VI. Um, because 
that's the whole reason why I built it, was so that I would have this information at my disposal. Uh, models, view models, and we are looking at a 2V, where is it? Where is it? Here it is, 2VI. October 1992 it came out. It has a 25 megahertz, um, uh, 25 megahertz 68030 chip. Uh, it has, let me just have a quick look at the RAM here. Onboard RAM, two megabytes, one RAM slot. So I was full of it. One RAM slot, max, no, that's not right. Oh, I accidentally clicked on a PowerBook 145. What the hell am I talking about? Uh, boy, oh boy, this is professional. TVI. It's a 16 megahertz. I'm on the right one now? Yeah. Okay. Let's start that again, shall we? 16 megahertz, 68030. So it's no speedy, but it was the budget model. The 2VX was the expensive one. This is the budget one. So, um, um, okay. I love caddy load. Okay, well, that's good. It, it, the really funny thing about caddy loading CD-ROM drives is they never took off. And the main reason why they took off was, didn't take off was because you can understand the justification behind having a caddy load. You get your CDs, which CDs back then were very expensive to buy. When you bought your media or whatever it was, it's, it was expensive. So you'd have your CD, you put your CD in a caddy and you store it in the caddy. So it goes up on your shelf with all your CDs stored in a caddy. Then when it actually goes to actually load it into the computer, you just go boom, in you go and out you go. The problem was that that was only ever going to work if caddies were available for like a dollar each. But caddies were bloody expensive. And so people were just like, I'm not going to buy more than one caddy. I'm just going to use the one caddy. I'm going to swap the discs out all the time. And that, of course, defeated the purpose of having a caddy in the first place. And so then just tray loading came after that. So, um, uh, yes. okay, when you have time to repair my LC575 board, I'll be hunting for an external caddy drive for the Cutter Classic. It lives in the caddy machine. Now, uh, I should just mention very quickly, uh, I'm just going to go back here to, uh, no, I, just, I was talking about the RAM. Onboard RAM, four megabytes, four RAM slots, maximum RAM is 68 megabytes on a 2VI. So there we go, that's all explained. Now, let's have a look here. Uh, all right, so let me look at the job report of your LC575. Um, still dead, is what it says. Um, can't see visible damage. Okay, so uh, question for you, um, uh, Jesse. When you get a chance, if you could potentially send me uh, an email um, and just maybe providing me with a little bit of detail of exactly the circumstances around it failing, whether there's something might have happened, because the board is spotless. Uh, I have recapped it and it is still absolutely dead as a door now. Now, I have been spending time on it off and on, but from my perspective, I would be very interested to know if there was anything specific about that that happened that might have actually uh, caused that to fail. So anyhow, um, right, I will... Uh, uh, okay, uh, Mr. Fahrenheit, the 2VI was one of the most useless machines at the time. Uh, it felt so dirty when I sold one to a customer. Uh, the story worked on even more so when the 2VX came out not long after. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, but this is one of the reasons why items like that become a little bit collectible. The lemons become collectible. The 2VI is a shocker, an absolute shocker, underpowered. I mean, this thing came out years after like the 2CI, and it was so much slower. It's just crazy, but anyhow. Ugh. All right, I'm just lifting up my microscope here with a little bit of, I need a bit of height so that I can get the analog board underneath it. And we're just gonna have a little bit of an inspector rooney. Um, as best as I can, these are always hard to work with because they're so wonky. Uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, okay, that's good. All right, let's jump across to the microscope and see if I can get this in focus. Here we go. Focus it is, right. So what we're going to want to do here is we're just going to want to have a look around for anything that looks like we might be getting some cracks in these solder joints or some heat affected. Now, here's the kind of start of one. It's not, it's not bad, but you can just kind of see a little ring going on around there. And that's usually a sign. It happens a lot of the time with these larger pins. You can see a little bit of a ring going on around here. So that's one that I'll want to clean up for sure. 
Um, some of the areas that I like to look around specifically are uh, um, areas that have been heat affected. For instance, this one here has this. I mean, look at that. It looks terrible, and that's because of the the heat. Now, I'm I have done stuff here to hopefully try and improve that situation, um, but you know, it's this 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 is somewhere that has been badly affected by heat. This is this reason why this looks wet here is because that's uh, just residual flux because I have recapped there. Just looking, 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 looking. If I see something really nasty, it'll jump out at me. It's okay, that's my my work there. That's uh, the uh, mist upgrade on this one. In case you missed the mist, I uh, I did live stream it. Mystic, mist, not mist, mystic, mystic. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from that one area of nastiness, oops, not too bad. Just check here. Yeah, um, the uh, the VI is one of the sh most short-lived computer models in Apple history, as a matter of fact. And here is your opportunity to own one. I haven't figured out how to enter the competition yet. It'll be something along the lines of, I don't know, liking my Facebook page or something like that. Um, and obviously subscribing to my channel. And I will probably be doing the giveaway when I get to maybe two and a half thousand. Now... That's a very big crack there, but I don't know that that you know we're, that's connected to the ground, so that could be an issue. I did say that I was having problems with these trim pots. Yeah, they've all they're, look at those; they're all cracked. So, <laughs> do you like do you like all the dust that's collected there? I love that. Look at it. Diggity. Let's get rid of that. So, um, so if anyone out there is a bit of a fan of the two vi and wants one, and as I say, in particular if you are in Australia, because that will certainly be easier from a delivery perspective i will pack it lovingly and i will have it delivered to you as long as you are australian mainland or tasmania but uh if you are in another country you will have to arrange your own delivery i can of course get it all packed up but you will have to either pay for me to uh, ship it there by whatever means i can find available around here uh, or uh, or arrange your own sort of uh, plan. So that's that's basically the option. Um, and it'll be interesting to see whether anyone actually enters the competition, and that'll tell us just how much people hate the two vi. Just checking this here. So look, apart from those humongous cracks around the uh, the pots, which you know. And if we're not getting if we're not getting proper grounding here, that could definitely be part of it. Uh, not everyone eyes finding. Fair enough, Fizzbin. Thank you for joining. I do understand that this is this is real kind of night night type material. This isn't it. Just sort of sitting there watching someone play with a color classic. And I know it is getting pretty late over there. Okay, so at this stage, so this is another another area that can sometimes get a bit nasty, get a little bit of heat. And I do see a little bit of, so you can see just here that this solder looks like it might have melted at some stage. I might clean this up around here a little bit too. A few of these joints probably need a bit of cleaning up. So I don't like the look of that. Look at that, it's scungy as. Okay. So I'll need to tidy that up a little bit. I think it's okay. I don't think it's actually creating a short. But I think we'll do those few things there. Uh, and I think that will probably be it. That will hopefully uh, bring us some joy. Um, I'm going to start off here by cleaning around here. 
So I'll just get myself my toothbrush with my isopropyl alcohol. Uh, TVX was double the speed. Yeah, was it double? I can't, I can't remember. I, was it 16 and 25? So it's not quite double. 16 megahertz and 25. I'll be able to tell you in a minute because I had that in the kitchen. Um, 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 um. I need to make this quicker to access. So the two, two V I. So two V I came out October 1992. Two V X also came out October 1992. Now that may not be been the case in Australia. Oh yeah, no, you're right. 16 and 32. So yeah, absolutely, twice the speed. What a dud. I'm still giving one away. Oh, you can still use them, let's face it. You can't YouTube on them or something like that, but you can still use them. Okay. Scan to have a look at what's going around here. I mean, it just looks like residual flux and stuff around here, but. I would really love to ultrasonic this. But I generally don't like putting analog boards, power supply boards, in the ultrasonic unless I really have to. And the reason for that is they just have uh, lots of places that can end up with water getting trapped. Uh, it just makes them a little bit hard to dry. And not only that, the uh, cleaning fluid that I use, the ultrasonic cleaning fluid that I use, does do some weird things to aluminium. Aluminium. Um, and... Um, uh, and so it doesn't damage the damage it, but it just it creates this kind of little black tarnish on it. So when I get a, an analog board that has lots of uh, through-hole radial electrolytic capacitors, I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. The detergent sometimes just leaves them looking a little bit blackened. As I say, they're not damaged, but it just doesn't look too crash hot. So as I say, I only clean them if I really have to. Ultrasonic clean them, that is. Okay, that didn't look too bad once cleaned up. Um, I might still just resolder these guys here. Um, I'm doing a lot of umming today, aren't I? Uh, uh. Can you use a Mac Toothy as a daily driver in 2020? Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> it is interesting. I'm, I am planning to do a video at some stage when I have time. I mean, time is always my biggest enemy. I am planning to do a video where I set myself a series of tasks uh, using, um, you know, sort of a Mac, a, a sort of um, Mac from uh, a bygone era. And I see how many of those tasks I can actually complete. You know, and obviously things like, you know, I don't know, watching a YouTube video. Yeah, forget about it. Just forget about it. Well, this is going to love some new solar. You can just tell. Oh. Yes, it would be a nice machine for playing Mist on. I love Mist. It's a great game. And I could still quite happily just sit down and play that today. I love those sorts of adventure games. I'll tell you a wee anecdote. When I um I got hold of a power power computing computer a long time ago. Um, you know, it was my, my main computer at the time. So whenever they came out in nineties, you know. Um and uh, I, when I got it, I was just desperate to get a game. I didn't have any good games because I only had, well, I had games that worked on really old computers. I didn't have anything that would work. See, it was a 604 computer, uh, a, a CPU in it. And um, I think it was a Power Tower Pro 200, something like that. And I remember I went to one of my local kind of like uh, elec electrical um, retailers, you know, people that they sold like fridges and freezers and dishwashers and stuff, but they also sold computers and they did sell, I'm not, actually, I'm not sure if they did sell Macs at the time, but they certainly, you know, they did sell computers and they might have sold a few Macs. But anyhow, I went in there to see if I could find some software. And of course, all the software was Windows only. I found one, one single game in there that was uh, released in a box that was for Mac and PC. And that was um, Zork Nemesis. So very different to the original Zork type game. It was a graphics-based adventure game like Myst, 
Uh, and I tell you, I love that game. I still play it today. I absolutely adore that game. I mean, it is in the same style as a mistype game. It's the ones where you hunt around for puzzles and stuff like that. But I just love that game. So, uh, yeah, very immersive, um, you know, just a good, good fun sort of game. So that's looking a lot better around here once I've cleaned some of that crap off. Um, I might just tidy these up as well. Uh, can I hold this board up with my fat gut while I do this? There we go, holding the board with my fat gut. Just these solder joints that are starting to look a little bit kind of uh, grainy. I'm just looking at getting those, getting some fresh solder on those. Ouchies. Just burn myself. Yep, there's a, it is a bit gunky around here. There you go, that's looking nicer. I might just, just freshen those up with a little bit of new stuff. Generally, if I've got a bad solder joint, I don't just add new solder to it. I take all the old solder away and put the new solder on. That's, yeah, it's really the way you need to do it. Um, most, you know, I might, if I've got a joint that doesn't look too bad, I might uh, bend that wheel, but on the whole, that's what I do. Oh, I'm not sure if I look at the flyback transformer before, so let's have a, just have a look at the pins on the flyback, because these do sometimes crack as well. Oh, no, they're looking delicious. Delicious and lovely. No problem there. Okay. How are we doing here? I suspect the viewers are, oh, it's 17 viewers at the moment. That's not too bad. Thank you for everyone, for everyone for persevering. Um, I do, I do realise that I will, I will probably end up losing some of the US <laughs> viewers as soon as they all start falling asleep. If you do fall asleep, just, just you know, leave the computer on so I still get the views. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, was it this one here that I had some that I needed to clean up? Bam, bam. I saw some. Where were they? I can't even remember where they were. I'll see them. They were nice little knobbly joints. Where, where, where? There was like four of them in a row. And I've lost them. I've lost them. Ah, oh, piffle. Careful, see, that's what I should be saying. I shouldn't be cussing like I did before. Like a rude dude. Oh, was it here? Was it these ones? Yeah, it was these ones. Okay, so it's just these ones here that I wanted to clean up a little bit. You can't see them there because it's off camera, like that. <clears throat> and then we'll see whether we get rid of the red. I do these, I generally do these two at a time if you, you know, you know, do, do every second one, that sort of thing, because if you do them all, if you remove the solder of all of them at one time, sometimes the component falls off. We don't be wanting that. Whenever you're soldering something, you've got to make sure that you've got heat on the uh, on the pad, heat on the pin. Don't just get heat on the pin. Don't just get heat on the pad. It's got to be you've got to have heat on everything you want the solder to be transferred onto. So when I hold my soldering iron, I hold it so that it is. I generally have the bevel on the pad so that I'm getting the heat, the flat part of the soldering iron pushed down onto the pad. And then I have the top part of the uh, uh, the iron on the pin, um, and that's getting the pin hot. And then when you get them both hot, you get a lovely transfer of solder, and you get a lovely looking joint. Oi, come on, it's good. There we go. You see that you, you can tell that I like getting the little round bits on the top of these pins, don't you? Because <laughs> the pins themselves are actually flat on top. I, 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 when I solder these, I solder them so that I end up with a nice little you know, round bit on the top. I don't know why. It's a silly indulgence, but I do it. It's what I do. It's just how I do it, man. Right, now let's see if we can sort out some of these cracks 
on these little trim pots. Uh, these are going to be really hard to access. Far out. Let's see if we can do it this way. Can I get this all the way out here? No, I can't. Uh, okay, this is going to have to be done without the, uh, the old microscope, I'm afraid. So we're going to transfer across here to the side view. Oops. <laughs> Sold the porn. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Ready, ready, ready. So who here in the chat likes to do a little bit of their own soldering from time to time? Or even a lot. Okay, let's get rid of these. That's good. I'm going to push that through. I need a lot of heat on this one because this is basically attached to this large piece of metal here. Um, I try and recap every night or every other night. That's awesome. And I can, of those people who do do a fair bit of uh, uh, soldering, uh, when was the last time you burned yourself? <laughs> With something, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, the... Uh, uh, you know, with the soldering iron itself, you can burn yourself with something that got hot from the soldering iron. Scarlet Swordfish, well done, you haven't burned yourself yet. You obviously haven't been doing enough, but... <laughs> I have to admit, I don't, I don't burn myself very often, but I still, it still does happen. Every now and again, you just get a little bit complacent and you touch something you shouldn't. I mean, the one that gets me all the time are the tweezers. When I'm using the hot air gun and I've got tweezers and I'm using, you know, you're burning away and everything and you're being super careful of the tip of the hot air gun to make sure you don't burn yourself on that and you're removing a component or something like that and then you put the hot air gun down and then you put the tweezers somewhere and then you rest your arm on them or something and they're still, the tips of them are absolutely blazingly hot. No, I, I do do that from time to time. So, uh, uh, two hours ago <laughs> on you, Jay. Uh, Um, oh, Alex, I told you at the beginning, you asked me what to do. I said, run the other way. That's what I told you. Now, if you didn't accept my advice, I'm sorry. I can't help you. <laughs> so, um, Alex sent me a, an image uh, on Discord the other day uh, of a, um, what do you call those things? A, a ribbon cable that uh, was falling apart. I don't know the exact details of what had happened there. And it was basically trying to reattach wires to the ends of the ribbon cables. Now I have had problems with ribbon cables before and the one advice I would have is just don't try dealing with them. Now you, you, when you try and solder things to them, they just melt, they fall apart, they're just they're a nightmare. You've got to try and get hold of a new ribbon cable or one that's close or something like that. I, I, I can't really offer any other advice than that. I mean, I, it takes courage what you're doing there, Alex, that's for sure, but I think you're mad. I mean, I don't think you, I think I got the impression from what you were saying to me, you don't have much of a choice. You're doing this for something, someone else and you're trying to get it sorted. Okay, so I've just sucked away the solder from this one here and replaced it. That one doesn't do anything that, apart from holding it in position. These ones here are actually connected to ground. So I believe that these ones um, could, could actually present us with a problem. So uh, it, with them not being connected properly. So... Uh, Let's just continue sucking some solder. Um, last burn just healed nice. It was about two weeks ago. Yeah. When, they, when you burn enough to actually, you know, sort of end up with a scar or something, a mark or something like that, you know you've done it good. Um, I, I burned myself terribly with a soldering iron when I was a young kid. Uh, I, I think it was a bit of a lesson in that. Um, then you're cutting off, you grab the wick too close to the end when cutting off it. Yeah, I do that as well. I, I do that all the time with wick. I burn myself, as I said before, I tend to burn myself more with things that get hot by the soldering iron rather than the soldering iron itself. And the wick, I'm handing wick all the time. I burn myself with it all the time. Um, yeah, yeah, little white dot. Yeah, little, you know, sort of uh, little solar dot. Yep. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I realised that cable is from 1987. Is there anything close though that you, that might be easier to wrestle with than than what you're doing to that cable, Alex? I mean, I'm just I'm only trying to offer suggestions here. I I I, I just don't envy you being in that position. And, and more importantly. I worry that when you get to the end of it, you're going to end up with something that's so fragile it won't work anyway, um, or it will work intermittently or something like that. That's the thing that scares me about it the most, putting in all that work and then finding it was for nothing. Um, but, you know, who knows? Nice new solar. So I'm not actually using a bevel tip for this. I'm using, um, what is it, like a wedge thing? Got a little angle. It's hard to let me let me show a picture of it in the microscope. There's a word for it, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, ding, no wrong button. Ding. So this is well. Let's not melt the flyback transformer cable. So this is the tip here. If you can see there, it's got a two. You know, it's at an angle, and it's got these two sort of wedged edges like like that. Now, I, that gives me a lot of large surface area for transferring heat. So that's why I'm using this one. Um, because this, as I say, this is just going to suck a lot of heat away because there's so much metal here. Let's continue on. I apologize if my, if my beard is getting into the microphone here. And you're getting nice, uh, was it ASMR, AMSR, ASMR, um, beard noises. Right, a little sutter. Now, if anyone is feeling tired and wanting to head off, I totally understand. I won't be offended. I am planning to stream again tomorrow morning in my time, which will be uh, probably early evening US time. Um, I will do my best to not overlap with your show, um, with the uh, Mac and Talk show. Um, I am a little limited by when I can stream. So if I do stream with some overlap, uh, please, it's not personal. Um, it is simply that I am, um, I am just very limited by when I can actually do it. Um, but um, I am going to be recapping a Macintosh 2FX, which uh, for anyone out there, uh, they were, they were the business. The duck's guts. The kitten's meow. Um, they were really powerful when they first came out. Uh, 33, I think. 33 or is it 40? Megahertz 6803, I think. I can't remember. Someone else out there will know. Ow. Um, just getting some heat transferred there. Okay, so all those uh, crack solder joints, that's all four of them now. They're all cleaned up, looking good, nice fresh solder. And I am hopeful, but let's just say not 100% certain, I am hopeful that that will resolve my uh, weird display images. Now, the reason why I am hopeful is because when I was playing around with this computer, I found that when I was uh, adjusting these trim pots, it was coming in and out of being good and bad. Oh, Steve, are you still in this, the chat? Don't you have one that changes color sometimes? Maybe yours has got the same problem. Um, I know you've got one that only likes to switch on when it feels like it. Uh, yep, I burned myself. Mind you, that was it's, it wasn't like a lever mark type burn. That was just no, I was I had my finger on the trace here, this big, great big thick bit of copper trace, and as I started applying heat, it would just started creeping its way up the copper and burn the finger. Uh, 40 megahertz 68030 for the two effects. Yes, so thank you, Mr. Fahrenheit. You're a font of knowledge. Um, and I mean that in a good way. And um, yeah, so they were they were just an amazing thing when they came out. The main problem with them is they use slightly different RAM sims to the other Macs around at the time. I think they were like 68 pin or something like that. Uh, so none of the other Macs use the same RAM. And so even if you get hold of a 2FX these days, you might struggle a little bit trying to find that RAM. The only other Apple device that I know of that used the same sort of RAM was, I think, a LaserWriter NTX. LaserWriter 2 NTX. So uh, I remember the place that I worked at, we had both. We had a 2FX and an NTX. And I remember, obviously, by RAM, we can put it in one or the other. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, so the 2FX, you know, um, in the great big modular case of the Mac 2 or the 2X, but way more powerful, and I'd say had slightly different RAM in it as well. Um, also had the two PRAM batteries, so you need to have batteries in there in order to switch them on. But, uh, but anyhow, I will be recapping one of those tomorrow. I have never recapped one before. S something like 14 surface matter electrolytic caps on there that need to replace. This one doesn't work either. So, and I, it, I, get, I think I've seen a little bit of battery leakage on it too. So I might have to do a little bit of repair while we're at it. So, uh, so this will be a, an interesting one because as I say, I've never recapped one of these before. Um, and, uh, uh, and it doesn't work. So it'd be one of those streams where if we get it working at the end is that wonderfully rewarding moment where you go, well, this didn't, didn't work, recap it, now it does work. It's always lovely when that happens. Um, right. Uh, Michael didn't get notified. Yeah, I look, I, unfortunately, notifications uh, from YouTube are just not that reliable. Not really that much that I can do about that, I'm afraid. Other we can we can curse YouTube, but... Uh, but there's really not much more I can do. I have found, and I don't know if this is something to do with time zones, but I know that I often, when people are streaming, like from, like if I, I'm obviously in Australia's time zone, when people are streaming uh, like in the middle of the night for me, I don't seem to get those notifications. So I don't know if it sends notifications out based on the time zone you're in or something like that. I honestly have no idea. But yeah, it's a real pain. It's a real pain. Um, okay, so... Um, so yes, well, welcome, uh, welcome, Michael. Thank you for joining. So I've basically just been fluffing around with some uh, uh, color classics today. So the first one, uh, I had an issue with uh, the uh, deflection transistor, and I found a replacement, but it was a slightly different one, and it's not insulated in the same place. So I'm having to try and mount this thing while providing some uh, heat transfer and some insulation. Uh, that's right at the beginning of the, the of the video. Promising results, but still not quite there yet. So I'll need to get back to that one, but I decided that was too bit boring to continue with. Um, the other is this one here, which is a color classic that I recently uh, tr tr convert converted into a mystic, <clears throat> but it was having re really weird things going on with the image. I found some cracked solder joints as I've repaired. You know what I'm also gonna do? I'm gonna get some cleaner for these little pots. Um, I really should check the solder joints on the pot, shouldn't I? But anyhow, uh, I'm going to use some of this electronic circuit board cleaner. This is, um, you can buy this in so many different flavors that it's essentially just this uh, cleaner that's non-conductive and it evaporates really quickly and stuff like that. Does it ever come out? Yeah, it does. Okay, are you going to be fairly liberal with this stuff because um, it just evaporates away. Or dribbles all over your desk. So I'm just going to do that, leave that, let it evaporate before I plug it in. Uh, <coughs> uh, I went to my Facebook page and didn't see anything. Oh, I did definitely post something on there. Um, I don't know why it's not coming up, but I definitely did do a um, uh, do a little sherry thingy on Facebook for my uh, my Brankus Creations page. Um, so there was uh, yeah. So just check and make sure that you're looking at the Brankus Creations page. Um, obviously, Brankus Creations, same name as the YouTube channel. Um, it's uh, it's the business name that I started up for my programming business. Um, but um, but uh, yeah, so um, I, and I just sort of kept it when I started doing this. It's like I've already got a logo. Why make another one? It's a nice sort of generic logo that really doesn't mean anything. It's just like B C turned into an I, um, as in not the letter I, as in eyes from the face sort of type I. So that makes it nice and easy. It doesn't. It's very generic. So sort of whether it be for programming or computer repairs until I got it works for both. Um, okay, so I'm basically just waiting until this stops feeling cold because the cold is the evaporation of the stuff. We'll, we'll give it a try though, shall we? Uh, okay, that goes down here. And 
this comes up here. Ugh. Now I changed the shutter speed back on my camera. So this will be flickery when I switch it on. So just letting you know in case you see the, if you were watching before and you saw how smooth it was, uh, and then you see it flickery, that's just because I changed the shutter speed back. And when I had the shutter speed on the camera set to synchronize with the screen, um, it, um, uh, it's a bit dark. So yeah, it's fine if I was in slightly better illuminated or if it was a little bit earlier in the day or something like that. All right, so let's put this back in, shall we? And hopefully we've fixed this because one of the big aims I've got at the moment is to try and finish off some uh, incomplete jobs that I've got. I've been working on doing lots of repairs at the moment. I've been getting repairs coming in at a rate of knots. They're just, they're, they're coming in really thick and fast, which is great. I mean, I don't want to discourage that. Now, a lot of these jobs, they come in, I do a recap, I do a test, she works, bang, fires are up, away she goes, job out of the way. I'm going to move on to the next job. Sometimes I get a job where a computer comes on, I end up with ongoing intermittent problems or I end up finding new problems that weren't there initially. You know, th and this happens all the time. When you buy a computer on eBay or something like that and it's like, oh, this thing doesn't work, uh, it's going to need recapping, the hope is always that the recapping is going to fix it. But it's not always the case. Sometimes there might be something else wrong. Sometimes the computer might have been busted for years and then someone just sells it on eBay um, with, you have no real history of the thing and uh, and they go oh yeah this is one of these models that needs a recap and you go oh okay no worries recapping will probably fix it and it doesn't uh, and then you also have problems where some of them have been left so long I've got I've actually got an SE 30 at the moment that I'm working on and the uh, it's it's just giving me all sorts of grief these intermittent problems at the moment it's not even intermittent it doesn't work at all but uh, it was intermittent and then it stopped being intermittent. And it's had a fair bit of corrosion, you know, really nasty sort of damage from uh, um, com capacitor leakage. So um, I didn't quite get this on properly. So I was going to do that again. You want to make sure you get your anode cap in properly. Because I'll tell you what, you don't want that thing floating around inside. Uh, okay, connect up the speaker. So, degorse cable, grounding strap, grounding strap, grounding strap. Make an appearance. Degorse cable, grounding strap, anode cap, speaker, uh, microphone, uh, yoke cable, and speaker. We're all connected. We're all happy, happy, happy joy. Ah, Mr. Crimstar, hello. I don't think I've said hello to you. Nick, why? I don't think I've said hello to you either. Um, so, uh, welcome, welcome. If we chronologize back to life, I had one color classic die shortly after purchase. Uh, 2SI recapping didn't fix anything except make it turn on. That's start, isn't it? <laughs> um, 2SIs are a real problem with recapping. I'll just say that straight off the bat. Um, they, there are two things wrong with them. First of all, they're one that is prone to actually getting fried from capacitor leakage. Some of the computers, if they get capacitor leakage, they might stop working you replace the capacitors and they start working again. Two SIs can actually get the position of the capacitors and where the leakage occurs can actually cause those boards to get cooked from the electrolyte leakage. So that's one of the big problems with two SI is that if it's a one that's leaked and it's been switched on while it's after it's leaking, it can actually cook the board. So that's one of the real problems with the 2SI. I mean, that's why they're so essential to get those recaps as quick as possible. And then, of course, the other problem with the 2SI is the fact that it has as bad, if not worse, leakage inside the power supply uh, and the, uh, the uh, sort of analog board. So that's a super important thing as well. So, yeah, I mean, look, I've, 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 got three, I've bought over the years three 2SIs. I've got one that works beautifully. I've recapped heaps of them for people, but I bought two that were in an absolutely terrible state. And the hope was that I would be able to get one working one from the two of them. One of them was just battery leakage, you know, chaos. It was just, there was no way that one was ever going to get working again. But the other one wasn't too bad in the hope that I was going to be able to get that working again. And I got it working and it was all working beautifully. And then something happened. I can't remember what. I think I either... Um, 
I think there was one, like a chip that I didn't, I wasn't happy with the way it was soldered on or something like that. And I redid that and I gave it a good clean in the ultrasonic and then I stopped working again. And this can sometimes happen is because when you have corroded joints that are just holding on by a few fibers of corroded metal, when you put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, it cleans that away and all of a sudden you've got a break. You know, you've, you, you know, you've, you've lost continuity on a trace or a veer somewhere. Uh, and it's a risk that you take. I mean, you can sort of think, well, you shouldn't have cleaned it then, but um, it was going to go anyway. You know what I mean? And when, if you've got, if it's that bad uh, that cleaning is going to, to stop it from working, then, um, uh, you know, you, that thing is going to fail in time anyway. Uh, Dana, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining um, uh, on this uh, lovely, beautiful afternoon that we have to enjoy because I think it's going to rain tomorrow. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, um, so anyhow, but then I got hold of a 2SI that was working. No, actually, I, the next 2SI two, two I bought, I think, worked intermittently or something like that. And I was able, I recapped it and it now works beautifully. That's my 2SI. It's one of my favorite Macs. I've got it up in the up in the house there. I've overclocked it so that it runs a little bit faster than original. It runs at, I think, 25 megahertz or something like that. Um, in, instead of... Um, uh, instead of 20, I think I think that's what it is. Um, and I've got a video on that on my, my page. And of course, the other thing, the other really good thing that I got when I bought those other two SIs is I've, end, I've ended up with spare cases, I've ended up with spare floppy drives, and I've ended up with spare power supplies for two SIs. So that's a very handy thing as well. Uh, Johnny B, hello. Uh, Captain 318, hello. <coughs> um, so, um, so anyhow, that, that's... Um, uh, just you know, wanted to mention uh, uh, the old 2SI. Uh, the question about starting up qu old quantum hard drives. One of the really important things you need to remember about hard drives is they're mechanical. They've got moving parts in them, which means that they have a limited lifespan. Some of those parts in them will simply fail. And even, even if you, I don't know, got hold of some spare parts or something like that, opening those things up, one speck of dust on, on the, uh, the drive platter and you you kill it. Specks of dust are like mountains sitting on top of a on, on top of a, uh, a hard drive platter. So you kind of um, damned if you do, if you're damned if you don't. Because if you do nothing with it, they're not working. If you try and fix it, you're likely to make it even worse or make it totally unusable. Now some of those quantum drives do have the little sticky rubbers. So the the head inside them spins. It does does this. Bet, 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 bet. And it's got two little bits of metal on either side that stop it from going any further. And those little bits of metal have little rubbers on them. And, and so they go, da, 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 and they hit the rubber instead of hitting metal. And those rubbers turn into like tar, a glutinous glob, and they stick and the head sticks to them and the head won't move. Uh, you can with those ones, you know, quick and careful, open them up, take off the rubbers, get rid of those sticky rubbers, put them back together again, then get any data off but don't expect that drive to become a usable drive in the future. I mean, because as I say, opening them is liable to give you all sorts of problems anyway. So that's a way of potentially getting some of them started just to get data off. But if you're talking about, you know, repairing them for long-term use, not really, no. Uh, and that's why things like SCSI 2 SDs are, uh, are a thing. Um, because no one's making spinner hard drives, SCSI hard drives anymore, so you're, you're forced to go with a modern solid state alternative. I have just ordered four SCSI 2 SDs, so I will have them in stock again soon. I've ordered them from China. They're SCSI, uh, SCSI, SCSI 2 SD version 5s. Um, and just reminding people that I do sell them, but I don't sell them on their own. I sell them with an SD card formatted with an operating system ready to go in a computer and I charge for that. So it costs a little bit more to buy them from me, but when I sell them, they're ready to go into the computer. So if you say to me, I've got a Color Classic, I want to put it in one of these, uh, I want System 7.1 on it and uh, I don't know, chuck on a couple of games or something like that, I will generally do that. I will get an SD card, format it, put all the software in it, I'll put some little mounting blocks on it and anything like that so you can then just come in, screw it into your Color Classic, plug it in, switch it on, and you're away. So, uh, Tom Barber, thank you for joining. So anyhow, just letting people know, SCSI 2 SDs, I've got some coming. 
So it's ready to. I'm ready to try this out. So for anyone who missed the beginning of the stream, this one here, it has been recently mysticed. Uh, it um, after I set it all up, I was getting all sorts of weird flickers and colours and distortions and stuff on here, and I, they were particularly particularly noticeable when I was adjusting the little trim pots to adjust the geometry of the screen. Now, when I took the analog board out, I found crack solder joints holding on those the the little um, the little metal bar in front of the um, trim pots. I don't know; they could be it, maybe, maybe not. It could still be shocking, but I'm hoping that those little uh, uh, you know things that I cleaned up are all have have helped, and we'll just see what happens now. Uh, if I if this switches on and it's just a normal grey colour, I'll be extremely happy. If it comes on as red again, it'll be yet another failure. So, it just means that I've got to go in and do more work. This is what I mean about these jobs that I do that end up taking up time because, you know, they're, they're not just a straight recap and out the door. Okay. I'm off now. Need to go to the supermarket. Thanks for the stream. See you, Osretrecom. Thanks for joining. I do appreciate it. Okay. Uh, they're one of the pretty simplest little designs, the 2SI. I co couldn't agree more. Apart from the leaky capacitors, I do love the 2SI. Um, yeah, okay. Well, fair enough. All right. Okay, well, we got to chime. That's fine, because this, we weren't working on that. I was expecting that to work. This has got a spinner hard drive in it. I can hear it going, and it still works. Isn't that nice? I just heard the sound of the screen degorse, which means we'll be getting a picture shortly. And what colour will it be? Oh, that looks a little bit better. Yes! It's not red anymore. Well, at least we had one victory today. <laughs> That's nice. So I've still got just a couple, probably a couple little adjustments. This one's drifting off to the left a little bit. So I'll need to get out my little... Uh, twiddly thingies um, and make some adjustments but I'm really happy with the colour here that, that you can't see it's a bit flickery but I, I've got it's a really nice grey uh, a nice neutral grey in that there so it's telling me that the clock's not set for the right time which is not surprising is there's no battery in there um, so um, oh that's the speaker I didn't want the speaker beep 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 Okay, so let's just have a quick little twiddle. I've got my uh, CRT adjustment tools here. The important thing about them is they are made of plastic, not metal. Uh, and there are lots of safety reasons why you would use these rather than just using a screwdriver, a hex key or something. So I want to go in and adjust the horizontal thingy, the thingy. All right. Let's just see here. All right, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Um, oh, those people have been sending me messages, so I just went to go and find a picture, and then all of a sudden I'm reading messages. It's a little bit rude of me. So rude. Very, very rude. Right, so what I'm looking for is a little image that I keep on my phone, which I must put somewhere that's a little easier to find, which is a little chart showing what all of the little adjustment pots do on this thing. Um, uh, because they're very poorly labelled. They're labelled with like two letters and they're not particularly... Um, I think I've gone past it. I've gone way into my history here. I'm looking at, Oh, there it is. No, it's just right next to the picture of the chicken. I have to remember that in the future. So, for exa example, for vertical centre. That's okay. Horizontal center is one of them. Vertical center is the S. That's not how you spell center. Um, horizontal, horizontal center is HS. That's not how you spell center. Okay, let's get a little HS here. Oh, wow, I need my goggles. Okay, HS, there it is. I'll shove a thing in the thing. And I'm going to just shift this. Oh, can we get in there? Get in there, you thing. Uh, uh, uh. Am I? 
Yeah, there we go. It's really hard to do this looking at it from this angle. Oh. There we go. Oh, I saw a flicker then. Oh, did anyone else see that flicker? Oh, I saw a flicker. I wonder if that's because I was playing with the trim pots there. Waiting to see if the flicker comes back. Oh! Did anyone see that? <laughs> we lost some colour there for a minute. So I, I think it's a fair, a fair assumption to say that whatever uh, the problem is still exists. So I'm going to have some more uh, work cut out for me with this one, which is. <sighs> I'm just thrilled about that. Yeah. <sighs> It's better than it was, which I guess to some extent says that I was probably I'm probably barking up the right tree, but yeah, I'm not I'm not at all happy. I don't like uh, problems like that that uh, are intermittent. These bloody color classics, I tell you. What could cause it to change for a split second? Yeah. I'm, <laughs> That's a really good question. I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> I mean, I'm still thinking along the lines of, well, I mean, you know, it could essentially be a failed component on here. Um, it could be, um, it could be a cracked solder joint. Yeah, a few things. Um, okay, uh, I'm clicking color on myself so you can know if you get most of it. Uh, there are triplet components under the RF shield in the middle of the yeah yeah the, it, it could well be there I haven't actually taken that shield off generally I, I don't usually have problems with the components under there uh, there are a few caps and stuff under there I have uh, replacements for all of them I've got replacement components there so I can obviously go in and have a fill around there or uh, get underneath it and have a look see this is one that has had some really bad corrosion it would be really good if I could give this board a much better clean, um, but we'll see. I mean, I don't know. It's it, has, it only did that one time. Has anyone seen it do it? Get do it again? I mean, I'm not saying that I'm I'm going to just be finished with it, but you know, it's it's so hard to do these intermittent things. Because you say, yeah, I fixed it. It's done. It's all good. And then you know, customer takes it home and they plug it in, and after they've been using it for half an hour or something, it comes back again. So. Um, yeah, with crack joints. Yeah, okay. Um, I might need to look at those underneath that, you know, that section a little bit closer again, Dana. I will have a look at that again. But yeah, it hasn't done it again since. Okay, so, uh, hmm. So, huh? Huh? What are we going to do with you? Huh? All right. Okay, I'm going to shut this guy down now. Well, I've been streaming for a couple of hours. Probably time for me to, to nick off. It's half past three. So um, let's get this one out of the way. And then I'll just decide. Oh, I'll tell you what I might do today. I'll tell you what I'll do just to finish off the stream, just to fill in another sort of 15 minutes or something like that. Uh, for those who might recall, I have a Macintosh classic logic board that I'm in the process of restoring after having some terrible battery damage. And I am an absolute Fool for taking it on. That is not in dispute. But um, I just leave it and work on it every now and again. I've got a um, uh, what do you call it? I've got a um, oh, get in there. I have to give this my undivided attention. Okay, let me just get this out of the way, um, and then I'll come back. Ah, I've got a few jobs that are. Uh, giving me some grief at the moment. Um, I have a uh, SE30 that's got SEMA uh, CMAC, it's been recapped um, and it's still giving me SEMA CMAC, so it's a broken trace somewhere, I've just got to find the darn thing, or it could be a damaged component, I've got a few I've got an idea of what I'm going to do with that next. I've got a Macintosh LC575 that's completely and totally dead. I've got a 
uh, MacBook Pro 17-inch 2010, where I'm having USB issues with that. Um, and I'm off. See you, Scarlett. Thank you for joining. Um, and, uh, and then, yes, I've got this uh, little classic board. So I'm going to just jump on. We'll do a little bit of work on it, and then we'll wrap the stream up for today. And then I'll move on to my boring housekeeping stuff that I generally don't stream because it's so boring. Okay, so this is the classic board that I've been trying to fix. Um, it's very badly battery damaged. Um, these, you, know, you can tell by the discoloration down here. Uh, I have already removed quite a few components and then resoldered them and cleaned up some you know, pads and things like that. Well, let's just see how this uh, how this looks. Um, do the connections on the yoke look good? Uh, we'll definitely look under the RF shield. Yeah, I will look under the RF shield. The yoke uh, connections look pretty good. Um, so, yeah, wasn't overly concerned. Yeah, you know, I certainly didn't think that was an issue, but I will definitely look under the shield. Wow, does that, that capacitor look kind of cooked to you? I'm glad I spotted that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So it needs to be recapped, of course. But then this is where all of the really bad stuff is. We've got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of um, broken traces. Now, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to get this working again. Um, why did I take this on? Was it arrogance? I'm not sure. I looked at it and I seriously thought, you know what, this isn't as bad as I thought. This 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 is fixable. And 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 the more I look at it, the more I think, geez, that was a dumb decision. Um that's gotta come off. That's definitely gotta come off. Let's whip it off. We'll do that one. I'll just do like one, you know, one chip each session. <laughs> do some trace repairs. Absolute arrogance here, yeah, I know. Oh, a bit chilly down here. Get myself warm with this. Ooh, that's nice. Starting to get hot. Uh, I need my big tweezers, sorry. Ah, oh, stuff it, I'll just use the small ones. Okay. I have a very, um, I'll tell you, if you want to talk about uh, stupidness, I did something phenomenally stupid. So I have an ultrasonic cleaner. I've been talking about ultrasonic cleaners a fair bit lately. And uh, Steve from Mac84 and also from MacYak, he bought himself an ultrasonic cleaner, mainly because he was badgered by me and Jay, House of Moth, to buy one. So anyhow, he bought one. That's great. He had some problems with it. But anyhow, resolved those problems, got himself a nice juicy refund. Well, you know, sort of certainly got some money refunded because they'd sold him rubbish. And uh, and then he was cleaning away. And then we just had a little bit of a clean off the other day. And uh, I grabbed a really, really bad, crusty, rusty, uh, battery corroded board and tested it to see how well it would clean. And now my cleaner fluid is absolutely chockers full of rust fibers. So I've got to dump the liquid and refill it again. So now I'm feeling really stupid because the liquid wasn't used much. So very frustrated, but anyhow. Um, <laughs> uh, still feel that you can fix it. Well, I hope so. Uh, put it down to the love for the craft. Yeah, that's, that's, we'll, that's what we'll say. That's what we'll say. Um, yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm happy to stick with that. There's a sound chip, by the way, if anyone was wondering. Okay, so RTC. Oh, I've got my wrong solving on tip. RTC. Who can tell me what RTC stands for? So the next thing I'm going to be doing when I finish this stream is dumping the fluid in that and putting new stuff in. Because I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I need to clean, but I can't stick them in the cleaner because they'll come out with bloody... Little microscopic rust fibers all over them. Real time clock. Congratulations, Dana. First off the mark there. 
And Tom coming in second place. Uh, yes, that's exactly right. It does stand for real-time clock. Um, and real-time clocks often have a fairly important role to play in just the general operating of computers. So even though you might think to yourself, oh, who cares if the clock's working? Certainly on some of these later computers, if you're talking about a, an old Mac Plus or something like that, the real-time clock, I think the computer will function with a faulty real-time clock, but in these, as they get newer, uh, the real-time clock is really important. So um, this is definitely one that needs to be fixed up and cleaned up. Now, these, these are really bad joints. I mean, look at them, they're shocking. Let's get it, try and get a bit of cleaning, but I'm going to have to get old, out the old scalpel for this, I think. Um, does TSI ha have to have identical RAM? Nobody put two RAM cards on LC. Uh, now, that's a good question. LC, let me just double check my little spec sheet. 2SI. Two 2SI. Two it uses, if it uses 30 pins, 30 pin, 30 pin, 30 pin, 30 pin, where are we? Ram, 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 ram. I've gone straight past it. It's probably under M for memory rather than R for RAM. Oh, no, here it is, RAM. 30 pin SIM. Okay, four RAM slots. You need to have four matching SIMs in those slots. So in your four slots, you have to have either four ones or four twos or four fours. You can't have a couple of ones and a couple of twos or something like that. It doesn't work. So um, they, uh, uh, that's just how it works on the Macs. They all, those, all those four have to be the same. So... So in the the computer's having RTC work on, it's still the holy grail to get one that works well. <laughs> yes. um, okay, so I'm going to clean. We're going to try and get these pads as clean as we can. We have to have our expectations set fairly low, because as you can see, they look pretty darn bad. We will not be expecting these to look pristine and like new, but we can at least get them to a point where we can say, you know what, I think they're conducting tricity. I'm going to get some uh, toothbrush. Uh, okay. It's interesting. I saw uh, on one of the uh, Facebook posts today someone uh, who has made one megabyte uh, RAM SIM kits for 30 pin. 30 pin RAM kits. And, and when I, it's a kit, it's not really a kit, it's a board basically. He has created 30-pin RAM SIM um, uh, printed circuit boards. And he then tells you which chips to buy. And they're, they're through-hole, not surface mount. So, you know, it's, it's the, 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 the RAM SIMs are going to end up looking a little bit clunky. But he has basically made these... Uh, people may uh, have seen these before, but this is the first time I've ever seen it. So he has gone in and created... Um, a, a board that you can buy and then go buy your own RAM, your RAM chips, solder them onto the board and create your own RAM sims. So that was a lovely, lovely idea. Now, the only thing that I could see wrong with it was he was selling the, the empty boards with no RAM for I think 10 US dollars each and I can buy RAM sims for $8 each. So you'd be having to make them for the love of it rather than actually for cost-cutting measures. Um, but I, I, it's a great idea. I mean, one day in the future, maybe those RAM SIMs will be a lot harder to come by, and then maybe things like kits like that will be the only option. But certainly at the, at the moment, I would be more inclined to go and buy some RAM, which I will be doing, actually. I've, I've looked at my one megabyte RAM stocks the other day and realised that I could probably do with a few more. Um, I've got a fair few twos. I don't think I have any fours left. All of the 16s I have are in computers. I've got 16s in, I think, my 2SI, my 2CI, and my SE30, um, which you know makes them makes those machines all souped up and do fancy things with them. I shall return in 10 minutes. Thank you, Jay, for uh, well, thank you for hanging around for so late. Because my goodness, it must be late over there now. Um, right, let's get this a little bit cleaner. So, uh, it looks a lot better now, doesn't it? Um, you know, it's, as I say, we, we don't set our expectations for things that look new, but we just, we, you know, it's all just about making sure that it's going to 
actually conduct some electricity. So we'll get these looking pretty good. I need a little bit more Fluxoriso. When I'm tinning pads, I generally use some uh, uh, solder wick like this, which is basically just braided copper. And I get it all soaking with uh, with solder, and then I just rub it over the pads, and it just leaves a nice thin layer of solder on those pads. Just like that. And then we'll clean it up again. I just, I, I should always say, when I'm doing this stuff, I often, I often end up looking like I'm doing it fairly heavy-handedly. To some extent I am. I'm applying the exact amount of pressure that I know I need to apply that is going to do what I want without tearing a pad. But what I would say to if anyone is they're doing this for the first time, be super gentle. It's so easy to just lift the pad and do some horrendous damage. And, and also, of course, looking through the microscope really helps you adjust the amount of pressure you're applying and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just, I just feel like it's worth mentioning from time to time that you know, it might look like I'm being really harsh on, the, on these things, but I am being very gentle. It's just a level of gentle that I'm very familiar with. All right, this is the chip that needs to go back on it. I think uh, I might be getting a visit from a chicken soon. We'll see. <sighs> Bit of a ruckus going on out there. Okay, so we're just going to tidy up these pins here. I've mentioned these before. These are a... PLCC chip or a plastic leaded chip carrier. Is it leaded or leaded? I assume it's leaded. Leads? Lead? Leaded? Leaded? Lead? I don't know. PLCC. Um, and uh, I quite like these. Um, you know, because they can go in sockets or they can be surface mounted. So, it's nice. It's nice. Okay. Might just hit that with a bit of sandpaper. The edge of those look pretty nasty. Nasty. Always keep sandpaper. Gotta have sand sandpaper in the workshop, don't you? <coughs> Ooh, this chip is hot. So, just gonna take a little bit of that grungy coating off the outside of those chips without taking too much away. And without damaging the pins or anything like that. That's something I've managed to avoid. Uh, Now, I should also mention while I'm working on this, if this thing, if I can't get this thing working, uh, no one's going to lose any sleep. You know what I mean? The owner of this, he was he was just ready to chuck it in the bin, uh, and and so if I end up doing something in this and totally stuff it, totally wreck it, I'm really not concerned. So I don't have any real fears when I'm working on this of doing any excess damage or anything like that because it's like yeah, whatever. Okay, so I've taken all the coating off there, but I've also taken off. Um, the uh, the tinning, so I need to now get some solder on that because it's got exposed copper. That exposed copper will uh, corrode, corrode. So I'll get a little bit of solder onto the end of my soldering iron here, and we'll just check our focus. Okay, there we go. Yep. Come on, come on. Okay. Looking good. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Looking out of focus. Thank you to everyone who has stayed around. I realize that I'm really, uh, I'm really stretching this one today. Um, I had a few different things in store, a few different things planned for today's stream. Uh, they didn't quite pan out the way I wanted, which is why I ended up just fiddling with those color classics. Um, uh, just trying to clear the backlog is what I'm trying to do. Clean it up.
Okay, now it's time to put this component back onto the board. And that's where it's going. Uh, I've mentioned before with the PLCC chips, they have a dot. A dot. Just there. And I'm going to line that dot up with a dot screen printed on the board. Just there. Dot for dot. And get that positioned as best I can. I'll probably hold it with my finger. But... <laughs> Where are we up to with viewers at the moment? 21. Wow. Hello, 21 people. That's uh, more than I was expecting two hours into this stream, I'll tell you. I thought I'd be lucky if I had three or four hanging on. Okay, so I need to line this up. I generally line up from one corner. Try and get that as uh, as accurate as possible, and then I'll tack on one of the pins just like that. So that's just that one there is now just tacked on, and then I will tack on one from the other corner, and then I'll start doing some serious soldering. So let's just put that down there, like that. Tack. There we go. So I've got a tack here and a tack there, and then I can just start soldering the rest of them. And I will do that like this. Drag solder, drag solder, drag solder. These pins are still a little bit scungy. Scunge, scunge, there we go. I will look at these um, at an angle on the microscope to make sure that they're all making contact. Some of them look a bit weird. Okay. <clears throat> you can definitely tell when you're working with components that are all, all sort of grubby. The solder just does not want to stick to them as well. Do, 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 just cleaning. I can hear a chicken doing something. <clears throat> I've been trying to discourage her from coming in here and it might suddenly be working. UA2. One of my dreams, one of my real dreams with this particular hobby is that someday, from out of nowhere, someone will find a great big cache of all the schematics from all these old Macs. And uh, we'll have all the schematics for every single vintage Mac for us to do our own repairs with. How awesome would that be? Uh, in terms of the genuine Apple ones surfacing, I think there's one floating around for the SE30, or certainly part of it. Uh, I think there's one floating around for the Macintosh Portable. Uh, perhaps a couple of others, but on the whole, there are a few that were made by Bomark. Um, they're all handwritten, uh, so that sometimes they're a bit of a pain. They are also, in some places, inaccurate. I have found a few mislabeled components on the Baymark schematics. But, oh, geez, it would be nice if we had proper Apple schematics for all these things. It would be awesome. Okay, so, yeah, um... Alex, you make a very interesting point about Apple products from the last decade. I feel like um, I feel like some of them are okay, but I just feel like there are a few things that really irk me, like the lack of expandability and stuff like that. Okay, well that's stuck on. I haven't created any bridges by accident, so that's good. Um, I'll give it a little bit of a clean. Now. Uh, I've got one of these little resistor filter thingies here. That's going to have to come up. Look at that. Look at that. You can see that pin move. 
it's not even stuck. It's not even stuck in the pad underneath it. So that's going to have to go. And every time I look at this, I just keep finding more things that need work. Uh, and I've got a whole stack of trace repairs to do that I've just, I'm just i leaving for another day. Um, uh, where were they all? There's, I can't even remember where they all were now. That's stupid of me. But anyhow, there's one more component. That's another one for today. That's enough of that stupid Mac Classic for today. I haven't even looked at the other side of the board. Oh, that's all right. Because uh, I can't test this until I've recapped it. So I'll have to probably recap at some stage. Oh, we, 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 we are missing a, um, what do you call that thing? Wire one. <coughs> uh, crystal, uh, an oscillator. That's for the real-time clock. I have a replacement for that. We are also missing one, two diodes. And they are connected to the backup battery. And I don't need to stick them on, I don't think. I don't think I need to stick them on just to test it. They'll, they'll only need to be on <coughs> when I put the... Um, when I put a battery holder on there. Assuming, of course, I get this working. So, well, I think that's it for me for tonight. I think I've been going for well and truly long enough. I do thank you all for your patience. Does anyone have any? No, that was the... Um, what we were looking at then was a Macintosh Classic. Why anyone would spend that much time fixing up a Macintosh Classic is beyond me. Uh, the Quadra 700, which is now my Quadra 700, um, I negotiated with the owner and he uh, he has sold it to me. Um, oh, it's up in the house at the moment, yeah. Um, or is it? I thought I brought it back down here again. Uh, I haven't done any more work on it. Um, I know I was using it recently just to... Oh, is that it? Yeah, there it is. This is the Quadra 700 here. Um, I haven't done any work on this in a little while. Um, the problems are all along here. Uh, this one, um, there's no, um, what do you call that thing? There's no CPU in it at the moment, but that's just because it's over here. Ah! But this one, I haven't done any work on this one in a while. I need to, um, uh, I need to, you know, look for some more broken traces or something. Power light comes on, but nothing else. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I might fix it one day, um, but I don't know. I'm not, I've, I've spent a lot of time on it already. I'm not super confident. So, yeah, it's a, it is a shame, but can't be helped. That's batteries for you. Just a reminder to everyone, kids, don't forget to check your batteries. Um, okay, so uh, just before I sign off, does anyone have any questions they would like to throw at me? Um, if not, I will just... Uh, wrap things up and let everyone get to bed or go out or do it is whatever it is it's time to do i'm going out to dinner tonight um okay just go quick check catch up on the chat yeah i can understand that it's in fragments of classic analog board schematics okay yeah uh, the Mac Plus schematic is official too. Could well be. I think I've seen that too. <clears throat> uh, yes, I mean, it's true. Apple is run by investors at the moment. That is a real shame. There's no real innovators there anymore. Um, it'll just be interesting to see whether they kind of listen to their customers because I think there are plenty of people that aren't particularly happy with the way it's running at the moment. Um... Made it to the end. Almost 2 a.m. here. Yes, okay. Time for bed. Um, uh, thank you for keeping the, this regular stream up. You're most welcome. I do, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I do enjoy doing them and I'm glad to do them. And I often get to the end of the day and think I got nothing done today apart from that stream. But, uh, uh, but you know, I, I, I am very happy to be doing those for sure. Uh, Am I training a young Padawan? No, I'm not, interestingly enough. Um, I, I, it's not really in that position. I might, at, at some stage in the future, look at trying to impart my knowledge on someone else. Um, it's part of what I'm doing with these streams to some extent, but um, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't have any youngsters, so uh, so yeah, this um, uh, it'd be nice to pass this knowledge on to someone at some stage, but it's, this is still very much only my hobby, so it's not it's not my full time business. So it's not like I can take on employees or anything like that. Um, 
What are some of the other causes of Mac Classic checkerboard patterns other than cap issues? I recap the Mac and still have issues. Busted traces. <laughs> so um, essentially the the what happens is the capacitors leak, they damage the traces and they cause breaks in those traces or it can also be, um, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sort of capacitor leakage. So here's what I would essentially suggest with that. I mean, obviously, once you've recapped it, the first thing you do, and I don't say this to be critical of anyone because it's exactly what I do. If it's still not working, the first thing you do is check your work, check your recapping work really, really closely, magnifying glass out, multimeter out, go in and check. Make sure that all of the joints are soldered on correctly. Make sure that you haven't accidentally created any short somewhere, bridging that solder to somewhere else. Do that first. That's the very first step you do. Then after doing that, you then need to go in and have a look around at the areas that have been affected by the capacitor leakage. Look for any traces that are dark. Look for any traces that look like they might have some damage. Uh, look for, to see if that you've caused any damage while you're recapping. I've had this happen before. I had a board come to me, person recapped it, couldn't get it to work. I flipped it over, found they'd knocked a little capacitor off the back of the board, just one of those little tiny uh, ceramic ones. They just knocked one component off the board and that was that board totally dead. I was able to just replace that single component and bang, away she went. So yeah, look, there are lots of things, but essentially that checkerboard is related to the problems with the capacitor leakage. It's either a, a, a symptom of what's happened there, you know, you, and you just have to keep hunting it down. Um, that's just how it goes, I'm afraid. Um, okay. Yes, it does mean the end is nigh. I'm sorry, Jay. Um, I'll be fiddling around with computers for a while yet, so you can Skype with me if you want. Um, and uh, okay, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Sharing your knowledge. I, I, you're most welcome. Uh, looking forward to those SCSI 2 flat, SCSI 2 SD. Yeah, that's that's the thingy. I'm doing another video on those. I've done a video on the SCSI 2 SD where I explain what it is and how it works. It's on the featured videos of my YouTube channel. If you're interested to know about the SCSI 2 SD, jump on and have a look there on my channel. Um, and I am doing another video on SCSI 2 SD coming at some stage where I'm going to be going through the process of installing one in a compact mat. So, uh, so while the battery there's a round like hole full of solder. Any ideas what that is between the battery and C13? All right. You're making me drag this out, aren't you? Aren't you? Uh, what do we got here? That's a plus. That's an SE. Let's have a look. Righty, righty, righty. SE. Um, okay. On the SE logic board by the battery, there's a round... No. Now, is yours a soldered on battery or one with a uh, battery holder? Because um, they there are two different versions of this, or a couple of different versions of the SE Logic board. Um, for also between the battery and C13. Between the battery and C13. Okay, well, I suspect yours is a soldered on battery. Are you talking about... Are you talking about this big knob there. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 Um, I don't actually know what that is. I'll just be straight off the bat and say that. Um, what it can be, what it could be, there are a couple of things it could be. First of all, it could be a probe point, uh, somewhere where you actually test, but it seems a little bit large for that. What a more likely thing is, it was probably a hole for a different type of component. this And this did happen with these, um, where they were potentially going to use, so for example, this battery holder, um, there's there's two holes here. There's, you know, I can't see it, let me, let me zoom in here. I'm just gonna jump across here real quick. Let me look. See, you can see here, see how there's two holes there? That's there's one hole there and one hole there. That's because there are two different type, they're different size, for one for the battery holder and one for the soldered on battery. So there's two separate holes there for putting something in. This one here, that could well have been a hole for an earlier design of the board with maybe a bigger component or something like that. Maybe a big uh, axial cap or something like that, I'm not sure. But yeah, look at it, it's, it's huge. 
Great big hole. Shall we shall we suck the solder out and see what's in it? And then we'll wrap it up. Great big hole full of solder. It's got some plastic. That is, I would say, uh, probably a hole designed for um, uh, this battery holder. Uh, probably has a little bit of plastic hanging out there. It's probably designed so that, that when that holder goes on, it's held straight. That's just, that's my guess because I just saw plastic sticking through it. So I'm guessing that plastic is part of this uh, battery holder. Um, we can actually get the um machine out and test that for sure. Try buzzing to the battery connector. Well, now that I've actually seen that there's plastic in the other side of it, and I don't think it is, but yes, I could do that. Um, let's go beepity beep beep on the uh, multi-meter. And we'll go, nope, nope, nope. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. I'm just checking the power rails here. Nope. It's a nothing. Looks like it done go nowhere. Okay. Get the goggles back on. Get the um machine out. Take the battery holder off. See, see the links I go to? Don't let anyone ever say that I don't uh, look after my viewers. It's been a, it's been a thing. I do actually have the wrong size thing on the um machine. Um, I've, uh, I've got a, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the little tip on the end there is a, is a, like a really wide one. I need a more narrow one for this. Okay. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Yes, I think it's a mounting hole. But, you know, you've just really piqued my curiosity now. Uh, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What an idiot. That's me. Ba -boom. Ba -boom. Okay, do you reckon I can get the battery holder out now? Oh, this board is dead, so I really don't care what I do to it. There we go. We're out. And yes, it is a mounting hole. We can see here there is a little plastic blob that sticks out from this battery holder. And then it is, it is designed to go into that little hole to get the position of this battery holder correct. So there we go. The mystery is solved. Okay, that's all that. So, um, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I do appreciate your company. Um, and I will be streaming again tomorrow a little bit earlier. For those in the States, it will be a little bit earlier. It'll probably be, you know, sort of, I don't know, 8 or 9 p.m., something like that. And, uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. And I will see you at the next one, hopefully. So, thanks for joining. Bye.